why Superman works alone. How many are there? I live my life a quarter mile at a time. They're coming for you, Barbara. He has my eyes. He has his mother's cheekbones. He has her competitive nature. He has my weird sense of humor. <laughs> he has her love of reading. He has my oxycodone. Some things should never be passed down. Lock up or turn in your prescription drugs. Learn more at secureyourmeds.ca. A message from Drug Free Kids Canada. The lift wasn't working and he was in pain, so I tried to lift him on my own. Yes, it's bad. I'll need help. Can I help you with that? No, I'm good. Thanks. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Piercy. This is my co-host. Amanda Hancock. And we are at the 201st Royal St. John's Regatta down by Kitty Vitty Lake. It is a large day. It is ideal conditions, ideal rowing conditions. We're teeing up for the first race at 720. It is a female amateur race. It's going to be a great start to the day. So, um, some of these people who are watching likely recognize me from Edit of Fog or some of the other Rogers TV things that I've been a part of, and they might recognize you from maybe winning some medals down here in the past. So why don't you give everybody a brief history of Amanda Hancock? Sure. Well, the last three years, I've been a member of the M5 rowing team. Uh, I said, wait, wait a second. Didn't M5 do something <laughs> remarkable last year? A little, a little. Yeah, we had a pretty large year last year. We went uh, under the... 15-year-old standing women's championship course record. So the 456.7 was broken and we set a new barrier of 456.1 and we're hoping that uh, that will stand for to, to make it through to the end of the day. But <laughs> with these conditions, who knows? It's anybody's race. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one here today. Um, yeah. So you've been you've been rowing for a long time. Since 1995, I think, was my first year. I'm like the furniture down here. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never rode. No? Ever. But you I've should done, try. I've done, maybe I will. But I've done this kind of thing before, which is why I think that makes us a really good, like, one-two punch for this kind of a thing. I will do right? my best to tell you the things about rowing. Okay. So, and I'll do my best to fill blank space because we're only on the air for, like, 28 hours or something like that. <laughs> So if you're not enjoying this so far, whew, you are in for a long day. So uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that's going on that's different here, right? Like, for instance, where we're standing, right? Exactly. This wasn't like this when you started rowing in 95. This is brand new. Actually, this time last week, this was a full-on construction zone. This winter circle uh, is brand new for this 201st Royal St. John's Regatta. There's a new dock. Uh, there's a new marquee space over there. And there's lots of exciting changes uh, this year. So can I tell you about those? Are you I, ready? I, w I would love to hear them. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so this year, um, after on the heels of the 200th regatta last year, 
there's been some exciting announcements to changes in kind of the way things are run with the races. So the regatta committee announced just last week that instead of the men's course and the ladies course, we're now referring to these courses as the long course, which is 2,450 meters, so about 2.5 kilometers. And then the ladies course is the half course, which is 1,250 meters. So um, that was an official kind of uh, name change to those course distances. And the other exciting announcement that the regatta committee made last week is starting next year, the order of the championship races will alternate to reflect these first two races of the day. So last year, the men's race started off at 7.20 and then it switched to the women's races. This year, the women are starting off at 7.20. Oh, so year after year, back It goes and back forth. and forth, back and forth. But typically- Is there an advantage? Yes, because so right now it's yeah. early, the winds are low, so you want to row as soon as possible while so and take advantage of these winds. winds are low earlier in the morning. Earlier in the morning, and then the later in the evening it gets, the calmer the water gets, so you want to have the early morning yes. race and the later in the evening race from a rower's perspective. So we can see some of the crews are already warming up and getting ready to head to the start line uh, okay. for this so first race. So the women race. are starting this year. Yeah, there was the big record that the M5 crew that you were on last year broke. Yes. And I heard a rumor in the car <laughs> on the way here that something pretty cool happened at the Placentia Regatta recently. Oh. Can you elaborate? Wow. Well, this right here on the screen now is the Cal team that's uh, warming up. And at the Placentia Regatta, so High Flow Drolic is another um, contender for the women's championship here today. And in Placentia Regatta, in the morning race, they rode the fastest time ever clocked in a women's rowing race at 4.54, uh, which is absolutely incredible. So um, I'm interested to see if the 4.54, you know, if that's reproduced here on the St. John's uh, conditions this morning. And the other exciting thing that happened in Harbor Grace is that High Flow Drolic, the women's team, that one we in just the morning. Saw then, no, yep. no, that was Cal who was okay, just sorry, on. Yep. But um, they won in the morning, and then in the championship race, um, the Cal team came back to beat the high flow hydraulic team in the championship by less than a second. So, um, so that's going to be tight. It's going to be tight, and I'm interested to see what's on the clock and who crosses the line first. It's going to be a really good first race. And I'm so lucky. <laughs> to have Amanda as my co-host today because do you know how much of that information I knew prior to talking to you? If you just had to guess. If you had to guess. All of it. All of it, obviously. Because <laughs> we're professionals. This is what we do. We're professionals. So you've been on the pond for the better part of 15 years, right? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, no, a lot, like 20. Yeah. yeah, 25 years. Wow. I wasn't going to test you your look, math. You I'm look, old. <laughs> yeah, you look great. Um, <clears throat> you're not this year. First time not rowing in a long time. First time in three years for sure. So I'm What's very. What's that like? It's kind of you know race day morning regatta morning. Uh, as my dad always says, he says you get the regatta in your blood. So that first Wednesday in August you always think about what's going on. So the regatta committee, they arrived here at 4.30 a.m. and um, they were in the war room and we have actually a member of the regatta committee with us who we're gonna chat with a yes. little more to tell us about that process. Mr. Brad Power. Yes. Okay, so you can go get ready to have a conversation with Brad. Okay. We're gonna have a little look up and down the pond. We're gonna talk to Mr. Brad Power and we will be right back. Hi, I'm here with Bradley Power, the captain of the course and the vice president of the regatta committee. Good morning, Brad. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thanks. And how are you feeling today? I think we are a very lucky group here today to have such beautiful weather on our doorstep. I'm uh, really excited. We have so many races to get off today, and this is perfect weather to make sure they're all a success. It is perfect weather. So what does it mean, tell the people at home, captain of the course, what is that? So my role effectively is to run the races. I'm the individual that upholds the rules, make sure everything is officiated, and uh, I have a team that uh, work both out on the pond in our timing tower and in our race control center to make sure everything goes smooth throughout the day. So captain of the course is the one that oversees the racing, and uh, of course we have a full executive that have all kinds of other roles in this big army that we lead. But uh, yeah, my role this morning is to make sure these races go off safely and effectively, and uh, I think we're well on our way. We certainly are. Now, I know this isn't a one-day event, 
this is preparation all year, but I think I heard somebody say that you guys arrived at 4.30 to make the call this morning. When, how long have you been up already today? Well, Amanda, I went home at 4 and I came back at 4.30. Oh, my goodness. So uh, we've been up for quite some time, but uh, that's par for the course. This is, uh, this is what we do. We keep an eye to things about 48 hours in advance, and uh, we plan for everything to, uh, to make the decision at 5.30 in the morning with our 50-member committee. That's exactly what we did this morning. We convened on the boathouse, many of us 4.30, but 5.30 was our official meeting. We, uh, we reviewed the forecast for the next two days and they held a vote and it was unanimous today is regatta day it certainly is in all sense of the word and i guess it wasn't a difficult decision this morning no we there was no debate it was just a very quick uh, hurrah and let's go that was it now last year was such a huge epic tremendous year the 200th anniversary of the royal st john's regatta was last year 2018 how do you top that everyone was talking about it it was a phenomenal year How, like what do you do on the heels of that this year for the 201st well you know one of the biggest uh, risks that we had was would we be able to sustain this past our 200 last year 156 crews this year we have 112 uh, we continue to see a huge uh, um, increase in number of female participants we're almost at 80 percent now and uh, kids uh, from 16 and under are almost at the 40 percent mark so um, you know we we feel that uh, we are going to be able to sustain this a lot of new children coming through the programs or learn to row program sponsored by Chevron and uh, and we see uh, some new development opportunities in schools and high schools so uh, I think uh, you know the the legacy of our 200th is that we have a very well-run organization we have uh, a committed group of volunteers and we have participants that absolutely love this sport and we saw a lot of them come back again this year and I, I think we're gonna see that for many years to come I think you're certainly right. Now, you mentioned one thing there, development. Tell us about where we're standing. This looks absolutely spectacular. Indeed it does. So this was a project between three levels of government. Uh, we call it our 200th anniversary legacy project. Uh, essentially, it's part of the Kitty Vitty Lake Master Plan that was completed by Track Consulting. Um, so we had three projects got underway this year. The Winter Circle that we're standing on right now. We had the North Bank redevelopment at, uh, on the lake. And of course, we had a, um, a new dock installed at the Marquis, which is actually in the shape of a rowing shell. So I'm not sure if you had a chance to see that one yet, but it's, it's quite unique. But, um, you know, everything that you see here is, um, you know, in honor of the rowers, in honor of our history, and of course, um, you know, in honor of the Regatta Committee and all the work our volunteers and everyone have done over the years. This, we've created a community. We've created a place that everyone can be proud of. Um, you know, I don't know if some of your listeners saw it last night, but it was all lit up, backlit. It looks beautiful here. And uh, every rower I've spoken to, every coxswain and coach have uh, thoroughly enjoy what they see. And it's theirs. It's yours. It's mine. That's certainly right. Bradley Power, Captain of the Course, Vice President of the Regatta Committee, thank you so much for your time this morning. And we're going to go right back over to Jason to hear some more. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you very much, Brad. We have the first race coming up in, oh, I don't know, about 10 minutes. We're going to set you up for that in just a moment. We will be right back. The lift wasn't working and he was in pain, so I tried to lift him on my own. Yes, it's bad. I'll need help. Oh. Can I help you with that? No, I'm good. Thanks. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are.
Welcome back, everyone. As you can see by watching our beautiful camera work across the pond and across the lake, all the people are hanging out. It is a beautiful day. It's only going to get nicer. I'm hoping later that I will have to put on some sunblock. Well, you could. And I understand we have some people to thank here this morning. We do. I had a delicious, like, breakfast cake kind of thing and some coffee, and that was brought to us by the Spirit of Newfoundland, so thank you very much. I'm pretty sure they're going to be feeding us all day long, so I hope they brought a lot. There's a crew of us here. There's a lots of great things to eat around the lake today. There are, for sure. I'm a big, I'm going to send a plug out right now, and I don't care who knows it. My buddy Jerry Joy, who owns the Indian Express, it is the, to me, the best Indian food I've ever had in my entire life. So I'm going to send you a bill, Jerry. And if Indian food isn't your thing, <laughs> we have also got to thank the Home Depot for donating a barbecue to yes. Rogers Television. And that barbecue will be uh, given away. And yeah. we're going to tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, so like you can go to, there's a Rogers Ignite Red House. So Rogers Ignite is this really cool, new, fancy, upgraded cable and internet service where you like push a little button and you tell your TV what you want to watch and it just <laughs> makes it happen like magic. It, ign it ignites. Yeah, it ignites. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go, I'm pointing like you can see, it's over here. Um, you can go to the Rogers Red House, which is just by King uh, King James V, King George V. King George V. If, if rowers would call that the top of the top of the lake, top of the pond. Top of the pond, you'll see it. Top it's of the a morning. Red House. And if you come down between nine and ten, some of the cast from Hudson and Rex are also going to be there. Which yes. Is cool. Okay, so we're going to set up the first race of the day. Race number one, the Atlantic Lottery female amateur on stake number one in the Miss Tubular is the high flow Drolic. I would say the champion or the favorites going into this race with a 454 in Placentia is blistering fast. So uh, if they're going to set a time, it's going to be right now this morning in the first race of the day. So you can see their stroke, Catherine Kelly. I know she's really uh, looking for her first championship here today. On stake number two next to them, uh, coming off winning the championship race in Harbor Grace is the Cal Group with Coxon Ben Colburn, stroke Lindsay Hallwell, uh, Shannon Driscoll, Car Courtney Langmead, and the rest of the girls in that boat. And on stake three in the Iceberg Gold, we have Steers Insurance, uh, Coxon Gord Delaney, and stroke Laura Roach. Uh, so these guys are returning from last year too with some small changes in the boat. Stake number four in the Jerry Angel, Daw and Burke. Some of your media friends, probably most of them I recognize <laughs> from NTV or CBC. Uh, Daw and Burke is the sponsor. Cox by Denise Carew and Stroke Amanda Muse. On stake number five in the Dictator uh, is Coxon Melissa Snow, Stroke Nicole Bolin, and that's Pooch Cove Pharmacy. So, you know, with the exception of M5 Crew, this looks very much like the start of the women's um, female amateur race last year. So you can see right here all the, the coxswains are getting the toggles. They're trying to line those boats up straight uh, to get ready for the gunshot. So what's going to happen now? The committee is in a box and they will say, are you ready number one? Are you ready number two? Are you ready yes. number three? Are you ready number four? Are you ready number five? Just like the Channing Ganook song. And <laughs> if they are all ready, um, then they will say, the gun will go off and they're off to the and races, we'll the, yeah. literally. So, yeah. Now, at, we, at the four o'clock race, yours truly gets to do that. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to be like, are you ready, number one? Well, make and sure you I'm, do a good job. Well, I'm going to be <laughs> saucy about it. I'll be like, are you sure, number one? What about you, number two? No, probably not. So, as you can imagine, so many nerves going on right here. We can see on stake five, um, the Puchko Pharmacy, they're having a little bit of trouble getting lined up. So, the name of the game right now, you want to keep your boat straight. The coxswain should have their markers and be looking on the horizon to say, this is where we want to go. The rowers are reminding themselves of the race plan. And often when you get in position, the rowers in the bow of the boat, which are numbers one and two, which is where I rode, so furthest away from the yes. coxswain, you'll see them taking short mini strokes called touches. And they're doing that to keep the boat straight and get lined up. So still Pooch Cove Pharmacy trying to get the toggle. I think what's happened here is it's gone under the boat. So I know, I know that's got to be a bit stressful, but I mean, this is... Um, this is why they train. This is why they practice. They've done this a so hundred times. So speaking of training and practice, how long have they been setting up for this? I would say, so these top five crews today 
Um, barring any mishaps, you will likely see them in the championship race. Um, I mean, in the next women's race, there might be a crew that bumps maybe a fourth or fifth place crew out. But these top women's crews, if they're not training all year round, certainly from January, they're starting on ergometers, which is the rowing machines. They're doing weight training, they're doing cardio, they're doing runs, and a lot of crews more and more are getting into doing these things together um, just to get that group mentality yeah. of the training and to encourage each other to... Well, there's, um, a, there's a synergy, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, and, and I guess that's a, that's a big part of what... It's not, it's not just like your championship um, crews aren't necessarily the crews that have individually the top, say, six. five or six rowers. That's exactly It's the right. way that they work together. Can we talk about stake placement, how that happens and what it means? Yes. So I think that we're going to see the gun go off pretty quickly, so I'll just talk about it. With respect to that, the stroke, number six, closest to the coxswain, is going to be setting the stroke rate. Oh, my God, the butterflies are in my stomach right now watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so glad to be in here. <laughs> so uh, we can hear the, the gunner is about to make the call. Number six, is they're doing their start now so there are some short strokes just to get that mo boat moving from a dead stop so five and six are sitting at the front of the boat and they're setting the pace they're setting what's called the stroke rate which is the number of strokes per minute so in a race th for the body of the race they're going to be taking you know upwards of probably 30 to 35 strokes a minute depending on what your race plan and your goals are um, number three and four so they're in the middle of the boat they're what they call the engines so you want your strong oars okay, yeah. in the middle yeah. of the boat so they're not they don't have to think about keeping pace they're following so not me <laughs> So not me. <laughs> I don't know. You look pretty strong. <laughs> Can and we talk for a second about how beautiful this drone footage is that's oh, coming down to us? I like, look love at this. the drone footage. And I believe it's Cloudbreaker, who's a good friend of mine, Chris Legro, John Sturge. They've been doing the, dro the drone footage for the regatta committee for the last number of years. It's absolutely fabulous. You can see clearly on stake number one, High Flow Drolic is pulling ahead um, as they approach the turn. So as they get to the marquee here, that's what we sometimes call the minute mark as they go by the boathouse. Um, it's so no surprises here for you right now? Not yet, but you know, um, the women's race, everyone is always together on the way down because they're going to be cutting um, to start their turn. So by cutting, I mean putting on their tiller to start the boat to turn. You know, in about two minutes, 10 seconds, um, record setting pace would be cutting at two 208, 210. Uh, so that's what we're watching for. And then the crews start to separate a little bit more on the way back. So, so the race is one, I mean, on your start, on your turn. I would say on the turn and the finish. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so in the you could come race. off with like a less than ideal start and still pull out ahead because I guess you get to see what everybody else is doing then. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, um, there's not much time. A five minute race is pretty short. But you can see all the boats kind of still fit in the screen there. Um, whereas later on in the men's course, that would be a lot more spread out because they're rowing for 10 minutes and the one boat could be, you know, 30 seconds or a minute of, ahead of the other crew. So, yeah, the race is won or lost a lot on the turn. So you can see that High Flow Drolic is going into their turn now, followed by Cal Group on stake two. Uh, and then I think just as they're lined up, Steers is coming into their turn third and then Da and Burke, and then fifth into the turn is Pooch Cove Pharmacy. So very reflective of the order of the time trials outcomes. So yeah, we're watching the clock So watching here. the turn come around here, what kind of indication did that give you about where, where they are versus where they would have been at the, at the Placentia Regatta recently? Well, you want to see when they um, go into the turn, as I was saying, how long it takes them to get around, the angle they come out at, and when they what they call pick up again so that's when all six rowers are rowing again so you want to get in and out of that turn as fast as you can so having been a rower yourself and you're looking at uh, you're talking about the nerves that you have when you're when you're at this stage and this is where you're starting to really start to pull you're you're thinking about your placement like you're no longer focusing on timing it into the turn properly now it's just gung-ho all the way down how much time are you spending looking over your shoulder? Any, or is that devastating? Well, we learned, we, our crew, we tried to look um, straight ahead. So you can see the high-flow hydraulic girls there on 
Stake number one, most of them are looking straight ahead. That's the technique we use, and there's no looking out of the boat. So you'll often hear Coxon saying, head in the boat, girls. So at this point right here, it's the third quarter of the race. They need to really, like, they're tired. Their legs are burning, and they're just trying to get through that part of the race uh, until they're at the marquee, and they know there's less than a minute to go. So this is their, uh, the third quarter of the race is a very critical time. They're starting to pull past the boathouse here again, and we can see it kind of see them line up. So the stakes as they're separated, is this what you would have called? Definitely for High Flow Drolic and the Cal group coming in first and second. It looks to me that the Steers group is kind of losing their third place position, and the Da and Burke team appears to be uh, pulling up on them, but it's not even a boat length. So between third, fourth, and fifth place, well, third and fourth is a battle at the moment. Um, yeah, it's got it's going to depend on the finish right now. So stroke rate again as they head towards their finish they're going to be really trying to bring up the stroke rate push on those legs and uh try to get the boat across so how fast are these guys moving at this point like so when they're full speed they're full speed so they're very close uh we're at the 456 mark now so they'll probably be close to that five minute barrier um, definitely not That's over fast. 505 that's a very very fast for the first row of the day they'll be pleased with that First place, High Flow Drolic, as we predicted. Second place, the Cal Group, again, reflective of the Placentia Harbor Grace results. And we'll watch here from the drone footage who comes in third. It is almost it's too close very, to call. Very, very close. Very, very close. I and think it's it Don. I think Don Burke may have had it by a nose, but uh, yeah, it, it was a very close race. And here we have fifth place, Puchko Pharmacy, at about an unofficial time of 532. So excellent row by all five of those crews. And they are spent right there. They're sucking air now. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's, that's it. So that is our first race of the day. Woo! How many more do we have? Oh, 100. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> So you can see just how exhausted those girls are now in the screen. They're just keeled over. They're trying to breathe at the same time as trying not to crash their boat up on the shore. So when you're a rower you've got, and when you're a coxswain, you've got to always be thinking, yes, you're glad you're done the race, but you also have to get the boat into shore safely. Because you're not safely. done with that boat for the day. Yeah, there's <laughs> a, a lot of crews um, waiting. These are the racing shells, so they're not brought out just for everyday practice. These are important shells. They need to be maintained, um, so you need to keep them off of the gravel and the shallow water up there. So these racing shells, they get uh, assigned to different crews. How does that go? Good question. So what happens is based on time trials, um, the crews can select their boat based on their results. So um, I think we're going to talk more about the selection of the boats in a little while because we are going to yeah you definitely need a break like you just you just did that entire thing all by yourself and i just been standing here i know so we're going to take a little break we'll be right back after this <laughs> thanks
everybody. After that first exciting race, I am here with Ashley Peach, the director of Boathouse and Pond. Good morning, Ashley. Hi, Amanda. How are you? Also a close personal friend, and we used to row together on M5 in 2010-2011. So since those days, your role has changed a bit. Tell us about what your day looks like now. For the last couple of years, I've been director of Boathouse and Pond, so under the operations, um, I work along this myself with uh, the boathouse manager, Johnny Hart, and as well as the assistant manager, Sean. And between all the staff, we help get all the boats out in the morning, do any of the general maintenance around the boathouse, um, do clean up, help uh, some of the rowers get any equipment they may need for the boats, anything to help them get pushed off in the water. Excellent, and that's a most important job indeed. So how many of you are working together on that team? On the Boathouse and Pond Committee. There's about seven of us on the Boathouse and Pond Committee, so uh, some people are tasked with doing some more of the boat maintenance, some of us are doing some of the uh, Chevron Learn to Row program, and others of us are helping out um, doing some of the behind the scenes with uh, the staff upstairs. Awesome, and so what does it mean? Uh, tell us a bit about the flag status. How does that go? The flag status is always uh, of varying opinions. So green means it's a great pond. It's good for anybody that can get out on the pond. The red flag is that there is nobody out on the pond. It's way too windy or there might be thunder and lightning. Yellow pond is where everything gets a bit tricky and everyone has their varying opinions. But it's based on the wind, wind of the ponds and whether or not it, a crew really has uh, the rowing capabilities in order to navigate the pond conditions. That's really what we focus on with the yellow pond. So right it's now, today is a green flag, definitely for sure. There's so many changes around the boathouse with the winner's circle, the monument, the new dock. You were telling me what the, the material uh, that the new dock is made out of. How does that affect your staff and your group? It was a busy, busy summer um, for the staff as all the construction was ongoing, helping the rowers navigate because there was lots of different pathways rowers had to take throughout the boathouse in order to get safely out to the wharves. So they were certainly uh, kept on their toes this summer in order to get this big project finished in time for today. Exactly right. So most people have been parking in the Dominion parking lot all all summer for the training and now it's only been the past couple weeks that the parking has got back to regular and I guess this is a new normal down here at the boathouse. Yes, uh, we did lose a couple of parking spots along this side of the uh, water but fortunately it's great because it just helps continue the walking trail go all the way around the pond. We did gain some extra uh, some additional spots elsewhere so I think it's going to work out great for everybody. Definitely and I know this Kitty Vitty Lake Park has been walked many a times by many people and will be again today. So will you get a chance to take a break and take in some of the festivities? I might get to the timing tower and back down again, but uh, later on tonight, maybe there will be a food vendor left open. <laughs> Let's hope so, because I know it's uh, the regatta committee. They have to be commended. It's a lot of long hours, a lot of organizing. Um, so, you know, kudos to these people just keeping everything going, as Ashley said, keeping the rowers safe, the equipment working. Um, and so what what else? So this is the 201st. How do you come off the 200th regatta? Like, what are you looking forward to most this year? This year is just the continued excitement that is around. We've had um, lots of new teams that came aboard. We've also continued to have 115 crews this year. So it's just a continued garnered support, even from our sponsors. Definitely. So thank you, Ashley Peach, director of Boathouse and Pond. And... I am going to wrap it up and get the second race teed up now. So we have race number two, the senior female ghost or female mercantile race. On stake number one is the Atlantic Towing uh, crew in The Broker, Cox and Daryl Putt stroke Megan Ross. So on stake two, we have Kennedy Cleaning Services, and they're in the President's Choice. Uh, Cox and Barry Ring, Stroke Tina Ring, stake number three, we have India Gate, longtime sponsor at the regatta. They're rowing in the Oz Network, Cox and Jackie Warfield, who I believe we're going to hear from a bit later on today, Stroke Sarah Emberly, stake number four, Vuv Clico. I wouldn't mind having them as a sponsor, <laughs> Cox and Danny Hart, uh, and Stroke Tara Evans. They're rowing in the Smith Shockley, stake number five, this is the first general with Cox and Ron Witten and stroke Michelle Mullally Murphy.
Michelle Murphy, sorry, and they're rowing in the Newfoundland Herald. So this right here is the um, seed six to ten. So the sixth place yes. crew to the tenth yeah. place crew. So how often do you see somebody come out of seed six to ten and end up competing in the championship? Well, it definitely happens, especially like a day on a day like today. As you can see, stake five, their time and Tom Charles was 5:37, and that's the fifth place in the first race and the first place in the second race is 539 so only two very, seconds very very close between yeah. these crews so i think that atlantic towing or um possibly kennedy kennedy cleaning services will be vying to beat peach cove firms pooch cove pharmacy's time uh from the first race of the day to try and garner themselves a berth in the women's championship race so we're doing the lineup again here now we can see in the screen now, as, as they're getting set up and they're getting ready to, to check their orders, they're getting ready to fire that gun, there's a crowd sort of building behind us just because the previous rowers, they're all out of their boats now and they're hovering around and they're getting their high fives, they're talking about what happened. So what's going through their minds at this point? Well, those... Because they got another big race coming up. Yeah, so the, for the rowers who just finished their racing, they're going to want to get out of the sun. They're want to get rehydrated, refueled, and they have to start thinking about their row this evening. So they're not going to be on the Bouncy Castle. They're not going to be in the India Gate. They're not going to be in the beer tent. They're probably going to be together as a crew at someone's house. Some get a hotel room, um, but mostly they spend the day together thinking about tonight, anything. They'll, they'll probably watch some footage of their race from this morning. Um, and first they have to collect their medals. I believe they're going to do a medal presentation here yeah, for the female amateur. Yeah, and we're going to try and wrangle some people, have some conversations and see what we can do uh, just so that you can get to meet some of the crew and hear what they have to say about what it's like to be a part of this. And while we try and make that happen, let's get back to this second race as everybody starts to get ready. Yes, and it's great that we have the clock up on the top left of the Rogers screen so people at home can keep track. But of course, we need to wait to get the official results until we can give um, the breakdown of the exact official times that were rowed. <laughs> I can remember uh, last year as you guys did the, the record setting run, um, we were all... We, the, of course, we weren't in this new winner's circle. Oh, here we go. We're off. We're started. We were over sort of directly next to the boathouse and we were watching everything and we're seeing the time come in the unofficial time said it looks like her record was broken everybody was waiting everybody was hushing and everybody was and it was i mean it was intense it was very did, intense uh, yeah we did not know we had done it at that time and we were sitting in front of the timing tower it felt like an hour but it was probably <laughs> only five minutes just waiting for the official time and then Chris Neary announced that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new course record of 456.1. I'll never forget that moment, um, just as these five crews are doing right now. So They're all very tight together here. Very tight together. And what's happening now as they're approaching the 45-second mark up to the marquee, getting by the boathouse, they're doing what they've done before. They're executing the race plan. So they're doing the small strokes to get the boat moving, and then they might do um, some quick for 10 and they that's how the race is done you break up your strokes into bits of 5 10 15 um, you can count them i guess it's usually you don't have to, yeah you're focusing only on 10 at a time exactly yeah so we just saw the drone shots and now this is the sideways nobody is a boat length in the difference here yet as they approach the minute and a half mark so now while these guys are getting ready to, to approach the turner and to get in the setup, I just want to call the audience's attention again. If you want to come down here and have a look around, the crowd is building already. This is going to be a very, very big regatta. There are some changes to the regatta and to the entertainment side of it itself. For instance, the beer tent is now a big craft brewery collaboration with almost every local brewer, like everybody in the province, which is really exciting. You can also go down to the Rogers Ignite Red House, which is just down next to the field. And um, from nine to 10, there's gonna be some of the staff from, or, or cast from Hudson and Rex. Uh, you can put your name in there to maybe win the barbecue. Oh, we got some results. Let's step out of the way. These are the official results. Um, Rowing in stake one, one first place with a time of 5.04.04. The, the Hydraulic Limited Crew. Um, stake two in the Cougar Helicopter. With Coxon, Frank Wiggle, Stroke two, Catherine four, Kelly, um, crew three, members three, Tracy three, Roach, three, Wendy, Wendy three, Young, three, Teresa three, Butler, three, three, Amanda Butland, um, Jenny four, Warden, three, four, Spare four, Katie Warden, Spare Nancy Warden. Congratulations, ladies.
In second place, rolling in stake two with a time of 5, 10, 47, the Cal Group with Cox and Ben Colburn, stroke Lindsay Holwell, crew member Shannon Driscoll, Courtney Langmead, Stephanie O'Quinn, Marceline Vernon, oh, Bork, sorry, Jennifer Krusak, and Hillary Sinclair. Congratulations. <laughs> Third place, rowing in stake four with a time of 5.24.71, Daw and Burke. With Cox and Denise Carew, stroke Amanda Muse, crew members Megan McCabe, Daniel Barron, oh, Beth Davis, Heather Gillis, Nicole Smith, and oh, Coach Jack Hagen. <laughs> Fourth place, rolling in stake three with a time of 5.25.37, Steers Insurance. With Cox and Gord Delaney, stroke Lara Roach, crew members Allison Jones, Carolyn Cody, Connie Zeffel, Cindy Roach, Rhonda Bridger, Kimberly Horwood, Alyssa Devereaux, and Coach Paul Power. In fifth place, rowing in stake five with a time of 5.32.13, Pooch Co. Pharmacy with Cox and Melissa Snow, stroke Nicole. Nicole Hi, I am here Shannon with the winning Martin, crew, Allison High Kuna, Flow Drolic. Congratulations, Nicole girls, on a great Nicole race. Riley. How, I'm going to get you to introduce yourselves. Doyle, I'm Spare, Nancy Holder, Beaton. I'm uh, Stro Catherine Kelly. Ladies, Do you want to say your name? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Young, number four. Jenny Wadden, number one. Tracy Butler, number three. Amanda Butler, number two. Tracy Roach, number five. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so how was it out there, Catherine? Uh, it was a flat pond. It was a beautiful morning. Um, it was, we won, so I guess it was a, good, it was a great race. <laughs> And you didn't just win, you had quite a fast time. How, do you know your official time? Uh, I think it's 5.04.04. Yeah. You guys have had some season. It has been excellent. Tell me a bit about it. Um, our crew really came together this year. We rode for a long time together. And uh, our coxswain this year is new, Craig Whittle, who is a phenomenal rower in his own right. And uh, he brought the best out in us. So um, we've trained exceptionally hard. We're super thankful for our family's support. And we had a great year. So um, bring on tonight, I hope. And I know Craig is back out there uh, in the boats right now. So bring on tonight. What will you guys do for the rest of the day? Uh, we actually, as you can tell, we have kids. Most of us have families. So we booked a hotel room. Uh, and uh, we're going to leave our families with their dads. So thank you, dads. And we're going to go hang out in the hotel room for tonight. Okay, High Flow Drolic Women's Crew, first place of the first race of the day. Congratulations, ladies. I can't wait to see you row tonight. Thank you. Way to go. Group crews for presentation of the medal. Thank you. Thank you. So we're we're really close. You got you got back just in time after interviewing the ladies to see us cross the finish line here. Um, I, I'm thinking no big surprises. Well, I okay, so I, I didn't even. Um, Looks to me that Kennedy it was the Kennedy, Kennedy Cleaning Kennedy Services that crossed the line first there. Definitely so, uh, but it was a very tight race. Yeah, I mean, they're the, the all coming in within a few, uh, a, a few seconds of one another. I, I mean, the excitement that's behind us, the energy that's behind us, they're announcing the winners. Um, I don't know how uh, tough it is for the audience maybe to hear the commentary on it, but there's already a buzz here, Lakeside, and it's quarter to eight in the morning. It's quarter to eight in the morning. Morning. And the next race we have coming up at 8 a.m. I think the crowds are going to be gathering for that one. The NTV Satellite Network male amateur race uh, is getting ready. Those guys are going to be taking the boats that were used in the first women's race and getting them ready with their own foot stops and seat um, preferences. I've and going for a warm-up to get ready for their race. There'll be a lot of familiar uh, names in that race. Yes. Some guys who have been around previously. Yes, I'm not, <laughs> not maybe familiar to you, but I'm not familiar to you. We have on stake number one in the Fine Strokes Plaster and Painting Limited. Last year, these guys rose, rode as Outer Cove. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is just a and different And they pulled sponsor. it down last year. Yeah. I yeah, I remember watching the race. I remember the interview after the fact. The guys were very excited. We're going to talk some more about that and a whole bunch of other stuff when we come right back after this break. You said it's played again.
Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So, we had medal presentations, we had another race, we had a lot going on, but now I want to talk about something that's really interesting that's happening with this first men's race uh, and the Cadigan brothers, their father, and the Ryan Cadigan Foundation. Yeah, so you'll see that uh, there was, um, in this race is James Cadigan and Daniel Cadigan, no strangers to the rowing community. They have the Cadigan family. The Cadigan yeah. family. They have a ton of championships between them. Um, and their dad also, he passed away a couple years ago, Ron Cadigan. He was big into the boys' sports and also he's an athlete in his own right. Big into hockey, big into rowing. 
And so um, after their dad passed away, James and Dan have started something called the Ron Cadigan Foundation. They do a lot of fundraising. They do a lot of work with the Parkinson Society of oh. Newfoundland Labrador. And also um, they're starting a hockey camp that they're offering free of charge to um, kids in the St. John's and Outer Cove Logie Bay areas so it's a wonderful thing i just think it's so awesome what they're doing many people will know this crew as outer cove but the rowing this year is fine strokes and also mark hayward uh you'll recognize that name from pastor gaddits he is a champion coxswain he coxed us with m5 he holds um, a number of records and he's rowing this year so he is number one in that boat uh sorry number two no no. Number two. So he's in the boat somewhere. <laughs> he's in the boat. Okay, before we get into the race and setting that up a little bit, um, I think that the whole concept behind the Ron Cadigan Foundation is really interesting. It's close to my heart. I would have liked to have been able to play more hockey as a child than I did. Um, if anybody from the foundation is watching, or even if yourself can hook us up, I think when the season opens again in the fall, I would love to do an interview with them on Out of the Fog. Well, I think that's an incredible thing. Hopefully we'll be chatting. I, I expect if the outcome of the race is as we predict, we'll probably probably be chatting with James and Daniel and the rest of their crewmates um, shortly because the race outcomes that we're expecting is of course fine strokes to cross first on the line and but in the screen a real there battle between second and third here right yeah second and third is anybody's race in the screen there is the NTV crew and they are vying against the Belfour team so last year these crews crossed many a finish line less than a second apart um, so, so I know tight. they've been both working hard training hard all year on the ergometers on the weights um, and they're both going to be going after it today I so know do we want to place a bet you and I Oh, you place a bet? I don't know. I'll <laughs> bet on first, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you um, the, the fine strokes, they'll be close, probably under 9.10. And the Belfort and NTV last year in, or last week in Poke Night, which I can tell you what that is, NTV rode about a 9.27. So they'll be hoping to get in the 9 teens here now today. So that's what we can look and for time-wise. And the time conditions wise. support that. It's still early in the morning. Still early. The, the flags are, are not, you know, indicating not very much wind. Um, so it's, it's still, I would say, ideal conditions. So they're just finishing warming up. They're getting ready to line up. At this point, I mean, it's all about focus. It is all about focus, and that's what these guys will be doing. So in stake number one in the mist tubular is the fine strokes plastering and painting. Cox and Craig Whittle, and also the sponsor, stroke James Cadigan, five Dan Cadigan, four Mark Perry, three Colin Stapledon, two Mark Hayward, and number one Adam Cavanaugh, spares Brent Payne, Craig Whittle. On stake two is the Belfour, and they're rowing in Cougar helicopters. Uh, Cox and Kenneth King, stroke Eric King. Uh, and I know one of these guys bro is um, won the Ice Melt Ergometer uh, Championship. So we have some very strong individuals in that boat for sure. A lot of them learning how to row in Placentia. Stake three, Cox and Dean Hammond. We have the NTV crew. Of course, Dean was our coxswain with M5 for 2018 2017 seasons. The stroke of that boat is Chris Roach. And of course, Eddie Shear, who made it so nice here today. That's right, That's Eddie Shear. He ordered up a wonderful day here for us. Um, and these guys, they're not only being sponsored as rowers by NTV, but most of them working at the station, with the exception of one, I believe. Also on stake four, we have Smith Stockley, Coxon, Gore Delaney, stroke Paul Hussey. They'll be rowing in the Iceberg Gold. And then on stake five in the Palmer Lou Gold, which is my favorite boat because that's the one we rode 456 <laughs> in, we have the crew Ricana Petroleum Consulting. Um, and we have in that boat is um, Stroke Perry Duran, who is um, Gerard Duran's son. So, you know, you see in a lot of these families and rowing names, um, it's a family affair. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of the same names come up over and over again. A lot of the coxswains, of course, they're serving in multiple different boats at a time. You mentioned Jackie earlier, who's going to join us later. Gord Delaney's up there all the time. Craig Whittle, of course, out of one boat, right into the other. He might not even have switched boats. So these guys, it's over and over and over again for them. Definitely. And I mean, you have um, just kind of generations and generations of families that this is their sport, this is their tradition. Like you see the name Ring. 
and they've Dude. been around the regatta and the boats for years and years and generations. Definitely, and we just saw the first race, the women's championship, two Wadens in that boat. So yes. we have Jenny as the in the um, in the main crew and spare Katie Wadden. Katie, of course, you shared a boat with last year exactly. in your championship race. Yep. So I was talking about poke night. I yes, wanna, poke night. What's poke night? I feel I need to explain myself with that. <laughs> so what happens um, the last week of practice before? The regatta, regatta, God, regatta. That well, you're on TV now. You're very fancy. Yes, <laughs> fancy. So, poke night is when um, the crews go for time about a week before the regatta. So they want to see what they can do. And the purpose of that is, if it's bad weather on regatta day, they don't want to have to put in all this training and then not get a chance to do um, a race and see how, and see what they can do for that year. So they do it a week before, give themselves time to recover, and then do it again on race day. And that's poke night. That is poke so night. So we're getting official results here now from uh, from our second race, um, sort of what you expected. Yes. Yes. Definitely what I expected. And shifting now to the start of the men's race, they are off. So they're starting with their short strokes. So how quickly? I mean, this 10 minutes long. There's a lot of race to, to happen here. Um, when do we start see them separate? When do they start? Like uh, by the time you get to the marquee? Well, these guys will be hitting the women's kegs or the half course kegs around two minutes or less. Um, so they will probably go to those um, that half course all together. And then in the second quarter of their race, which is from the halfway kegs to the end, um, they'll, it'll probably start to open up. So this is the first men's race of the day, so they'll be rowing a longer course than, than uh, the women. At a total course distance of 2,450 meters, so um, about double the distance of the half course. So a wonderful drone shot here of the first men's race, NTV Satellite Network, male amateur. So how big an advantage do you have up in that stake? Like if you're if you're coming in on time trials, you get choice of stake and you're choosing that outside one. What kind of advantage is that giving you? Actually, the time trials, um, they just seed you from fastest to slowest. So you see the people, the crew that had the fastest time, they'll be in stake one and uh, second fastest stake two, third fastest stake three. The, when the choice comes into it is for the championship race. So the people with the fastest time from the race in the morning, they come to a draw around 4 p.m. in the uh, afternoon, and they say, I want to row in this boat, and we'd like to go on this stake. So they only get to select their boat and their stake for the championship. So is there a, is there a general consensus on which stake is advantageous, or is it based on weather conditions, what direction the wind is in? You said it. Definitely the wind has a lot to do I'm with it. I learn a lot from you, Amanda. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm here to please, you know. <laughs> so the, um, and also it depends if the wind is blowing, um, you know, towards the boulevard, towards the boathouse, up the pond, down the pond. Uh, you want to get as far away from the wind as possible. And also it differs between the half course and the full course. So. I know that makes on, sense because you you know there's a whole other end of the pond. Different markers. So some people say on stake one, um, on your turn you get caught in the weeds because you're over on the bank trying. You're this turning forever because you sound. can't get a good angle. So we had a preference if the pond is perfectly flat, uh, we would go for stake three just because it's in the middle, shortest fastest course, but they're all the same distance really. Okay, so now Amanda, Leanne is here. We're gonna have a conversation with her. Hi, I'm here with Leanne O'Neill. Uh, Leanne, I believe your correct title is general manager of the regatta committee. Yeah, executive director. Executive director of the regatta committee, Leanne O'Neill. So, um, what does that entail? What do you do here with the regatta committee? Uh, a bit of everything. So, um, I'm here year round, and um, I just kind of all the planning, just a bit of this and that, everything. <laughs> You do have your hands in everything. You're a busy woman. So um, tell us about this 201st regatta. What's it been like preparing for this? Um, it's been it's been pretty good. There's been, we, we really, um, our health and wellness program, we picked that up a lot. So we had the Zen Zone down there for the athletes and things like that. So um, it's been a lot of, a lot of preparation. It's been great. What, now, when I was rowing, the Zen Zone wasn't always happening. So tell me, what is the Zen Zone? 
The Zen Zone is an area that we have for the athletes. So we have uh, post and uh, post race treatment, and we have. Um, uh, snacks, healthy snacks, and we have Sage Wellness and Simply for Life and Proactive Physiotherapy. So it's a bit of everything in a place to kind of chill out. Okay, and I guess get out of the sun because remember how hot it was last year. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and there's some background noise around us as the next crew, uh, the next race is collecting their awards. But um, Leanne, what else can we look forward to here today? Um, lots of stuff, so all the vendors and all the races and just the, the same regatta fun. And how does this, there's so many different pieces to the regatta, the boats, the vendors, how does it all come together? This is not just a one week or one day affair for you. No, absolutely not. It's a, the whole year round. We're planning the entire year, so yeah, but it comes together. Yeah, I know. It's sometimes people think that the boathouse is closed and not open and activated during the winter, but there's actually um, an erg room in there now that's, I believe, People are, crews are training in the winter, aren't they? They are. We have a winter spring training program. So starting in January, people are here. Yeah. And the um, Chevron Learn to Row program, tell me a bit about that. Um, the Chevron Learn to Row program, so we start that again for we have fall rowing starting in September. So we do that in September and we do it in April and we encourage people to come out and try it. And you don't have to have any experience, but if you want to try rowing, just come on out and try it. There you go. So if you're interested, if this regatta 201st inspires you to try rowing, you can come and try it in the fall because uh, the boats are not going off the pond in August. They, or well, they might for a little while, but they're put back out in, what is it, the 1st of September? Uh, it's the first Tuesday after Labor Day. Yeah, and that program goes on for a couple of weeks, and then there's a fall fun regatta. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, September 28th, we have our fall fun regatta and uh, food fair, and we'll have vendors, and we'll have rowing, we'll have um, costume costas, things like that, so it's a bit of fun, and we actually encourage uh, corporations, like uh, organizations and things to come out and enter races. Excellent. So the fall fun regatta and... Well, the 200th regatta, what else? Tell me what else is happening here today. Um, lots of stuff. <laughs> everything. There's, you know, a bit of everything. It is. There is a bit of everything. So um, thanks so much to Leanne, the executive director of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee. She wears lots of hats and keeps everything running smoothly down here. Thank you for all you do. I know it's going to be a long day for you. It will be long, yes. <laughs> but so worth it. I'll let you get back to it and throw to... Okay, we're going to walk back to the other side and talk about the race. Or actually, I can talk about the race from right here, can't I? So the men's team, okay, thanks, Leanne. Thank so I'm going to talk about the race. We're into the unofficial time of 6 minutes and 45 seconds, so they're well on the way back. You can see there in the screen all five crews. In the first place position is the fine strokes plaster and painting limited on stake one and as we suspected NTV and Belfort are very very close they're going through the half course kegs now so about two minutes to go uh, it looks to me like Belfort has a slight edge on NTV so NTV will need a very strong finish if they want to close that gap and um, get the edge on Belfort and that I mean that gap that difference between that second and third crew that's exactly what you've thought to be watching for today so we have in this race um veteran coxswain dean hammond who cox with m5 and also mark hayward but mark okay, has we'll taken a bit of a different role and okay. he's not in the coxswain seat this year he's we'll actually rowing chat, okay? in seat number two um, and also in that boat, Mark Perry, Colin Stapleton, Adam Kavanaugh. And of course, Adam Kavanaugh um, is a member of the 2007 record setting crew. And we're going to throw to Jason to talk to the winners of race number two. Okay, here we are. We're with some winners. Everybody smile. You're all smiles. Hi, tell everybody your name. I'm Cassie Kennedy. And you're out of breath. I'm out of breath. I can't breathe. It's been like 20 minutes. Still can't breathe. <laughs> okay, so you're pulling down a big win here. That's a fine looking medal you have. Um, how are you feeling about what happened versus sort of like what the game plan was? Oh, uh, well, definitely wasn't our game plan. I mean, uh, we we're up, I think, on the way up there, we lost three oars. On the way back, we lost three or four, three and a half maybe. So we still pulled out a win, so we're happy about that. But 
definitely wasn't what we expected to do. <laughs> I think everybody who's watching really appreciates the authenticity of seeing like just it's not perfection that gets yeah. it done. Like what is it that gets it done? All the work up in the off off season. That's what gets it done. Training, showing up every morning, paying attention. We, uh, so that five and a half minutes is just the tiniest bit of it. Yeah, we have the most amazing coach, so we're so blessed. He pushed us so hard in the season, but oh gosh, we couldn't thank him enough. Yeah, he's really amazing. He's something so special. I, I am told that rowers are in really peak physical condition. Your race ended like a half hour ago and you're still out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> I'm teasing. Thank you very much. Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much. Amanda, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jason. So while you were talking to those winners, we had the men's, the first men's race of the day uh, just coming to a close here now. Fine strokes crossed the line first, followed by Belfour, followed by NTV. So just as they were in the order of their time trials. Um, and about as tight as you expected? Yeah, I mean, NTV was three or four strokes behind the Belfour crew. And then in fourth place was the Smith Stockley crew. And in fifth place is Rakana Petroleum Consulting. Um, so I know there are some younger guys in that boat, so they'll be happy to be just, um, you know, competing in that first men's race and trying to hold on to their spot for the championship tonight. So I can remember, of course, Fine Strokes coming in. They rode as Outer Cove last year. I remember in interviews after their championship race uh, a year ago, some of these guys were talking about they weren't sure about next year. They weren't sure if they were still in. But I guess, like you said, the regatta rowing, it's in your blood. Like, it's a lifestyle. It happens all year round. It's not only that first Wednesday in August. You know, yeah, it's kind of like there's so much work that goes into a summer. You just need to take a bit of a break. So a lot of rowers take the fall to just recover, do other sports. They run, they play hockey. And then um, the training, if they're going to commit to it again, starts in the winter. So January, February, March, things are getting started. Those Cadigans, I don't know that if they'll if they'll ever miss a regatta. <laughs> Those Cadigans. <laughs> they'll never miss a regatta, I don't think. So hopefully we'll get to chat with them a little later. But I know they did have some changes in their boat um, with Mark Hayward coming out of the coxswain seat and into the rowing seat. So I'm very interested to hear uh, how that was for him out there today. I'm sure. Well, I mean, so far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. That is correct. So we've got more races coming up, a ton of races coming up. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that we want our viewers to know. We've got some people that we want to talk to. Anglican East uh, Diocese, of course, a huge sponsor of the regatta as a total. Home Depot for giving us that barbecue that you can go to the Rogers Ignite uh, Red House uh, and put in a, a draw, win that thing. And, of course, all of the food that we're eating today from the spirit of Newfoundland. And I'm personally very happy about that because despite the fact that I have trimmed down in recent months, I still eat like a savage. <laughs> That's true. That's my mom. Right, mom? <laughs> right, mom? <laughs> right, mom? Yeah. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back in a moment. Hey. <laughs> the lift wasn't working. and He was in pain, so I tried to lift him on my own. Yes, it's bad. I'll need help. Can I help you with that? No, I'm good. Thanks. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are.
everyone. Welcome back. We're getting ready for our fourth race of the day. We're going to set this one up. This is another, well, men's seed uh, six through ten. And there's a couple of interesting stories in this one. Team Broken Earth. Yes. A remarkable group of people. Uh, Dr. Andrew Fury traveling around, saving some lives, making some things better from our very own St. John's Newfoundland. That's an awesome story. That is an awesome story. So, again, a couple changes from year to year. Last year, Team Broken Earth, they rode under a dual sponsorship name of M5 slash Team Broken Earth. I guess this year they've taken it all with Team Broken Earth. But on stake one, we have the crew Newfoundland Power in the broker um, with Cox and Sarah Emberly, stroke Tim Clements, Adam Fian, Stephen Hill, Brendan Dillon, Patty Griffins, Ryan Power. Stake number two, just who we were just talking about, is the Team Broken Earth. Uh, Coxon, Derek Mercer, stroke Frank O'Day, uh, Nick Smith, Carl Moores, Will Moores, Keegan Ow, Andrew Fury, and Spare Art Rideout, and other Spare Mike Rudofsky. Stake number three, we have our good friend Kate Vallis sponsoring Piotto Pizzeria, and Enoteca has a rowing team in. And you can also go dunk her yes. at, the, at the young adult cancer um, dunk tank a little Kate later Kate is sitting in the dunk tank at the top of the pond, and I think Jason will be too, so yeah, come on down. Yeah, around 4.30. If you don't like me, come throw a ball and get me wet. Come on down and dunk, Jason. Dunk Kate from Piatto. Um, yeah, lots of fun. Stake number four, Geotech Services. Uh, so Coxon, Barry Ring, Stroke, Michael Burns, Kevin Kennedy, Jeff Clooney, Dave Jeans, Brandon Butler, Mike Lester. And then on stake number five in the Smith Stockland, we have the Browning Harvey rowing crew, Coxon, Jennifer Summerton, Stroke, Mike O'Brien, Norm Williams, Williams, Rich Wilkins, Gary Davis, Paul Greeley, and uh, Randy Power. So you mentioned a few times that, um, that you make small changes inside of a boat year after year after year. When a f crew comes together for the first time, not swapping out, you know, one for another, but when a crew comes together and you build a crew early in the career of a rower, really how much experience does it take before you actually get competitive? Like this is a long road for a lot of these people, correct? It definitely is, and I mean it depends how um, how you go about it. I, a lot of uh, us kind of in my generation of rowers, I started off in fixed seat, but then I made the switch over to the other side of the boathouse and rode slide seat. Um, and gaining experience in the slide seat uh, style of rowing helps you technically, and then fixed seat really builds up your strength. So certainly if you focus on the technical and strength components, it can speed up that journey uh, to kind of a recreational, from a recreational crew to a competitive crew. Um, but m definitely a couple years. You, it's not often you'll see a first year crew kind of crack that top five, let alone win the championship. So, speaking of top five, what's the likelihood these guys in the six through ten seeds end up breaking that fifth space and ending up in a championship race tonight? Well, we see um, in time trials the Newfoundland Power crew wrote a time of 10.25 and the Ricana Petroleum Consulting 10.09. So it's about a 16 second gap, um, but you know, never the less, well, they'll, that will be their goal. I'm sure Newfoundland Power is gonna try and put it all out there and see if they can have a great race and try and crack the top five. But they've got quite a gap to close, that's for sure. And we've got some medals from the previous race that are gonna be presented to, um, of course, well, formerly Outer Cove, now Fine Strokes, now in a little bit as this second race gets underway. So we see everybody lining up. Everybody's getting steady. Everybody's like, this is where the focus comes into play. Yep. This is where um, you're doing those small touches, like you're talking about, you're keeping steady, you're keeping lined up and we'll hear the starter call out and make sure everybody's ready now shortly. And I just want to explain, because in your last interview with the Kennedy crew there, she said that we lost three oars on the way down. So just for people at home, what, what <laughs> that means... They didn't fall out of the boat. They did not lose them. They did not fall, sink to the bottom of the lake. What she meant is that ideally you're having all six oars rowing, entering the water, exiting the water at the exact same second. When someone loses an oar, it means they catch some water on the way back, um, they fall out of sync and they have to kind of wrestle with the aura going against the gradient to get it back. So um, some people in rowing would recognize this as catching a crab. Uh, catching a crab. I'm going to teach you a lot of things today. Well, I mean, I've already learned a lot. Okay, so we're off now with the men's um, 
like I'm, I'm the boat because she just let go of her or and everything just you know she has a reputation to be like and i mean this because obviously she's lovely she's remarkably talented but in a very true sense of the word as an athlete she's a beast oh yeah like the intensity the drive uh and of course now her sister rowing with um the well what could end up being the championship team this year that's exactly right, and I believe Katie now holds a record in every single category from female midget, <laughs> female juvenile. Uh, she doesn't have the intermediate record. I think is the only one that Katie Wadden doesn't have after last year when uh, the course record mark of 456.7 was brought down to 456.1. Now Katie officially has a record in every single category except for the female well, intermediate. You know what? She's in pretty good company because Wayne Gretzky holds every record also except Rookie of the Year because he wasn't eligible. So, you know what, if you're going to hold all the records except one, I can think of some other people that are perfectly fine to do that with. Okay, so. All right, so, excellent. We have some race results from the first race. High Flow Drawlic, we knew they crossed first with a time of 5.04.04. In second place is the Cal Group, 5.10.47 is the official time. Daw and Burke in third position, 5.24.71. Steers Insurance 525.37, Pooch Cove Pharmacy 532.13. So the 532 is the time to beat. Meaning that here in our second race results, Kennedy Cleaning Service at 530.52, then Atlantic Towing comes in at 533.78, uh, India Gate then at 540.04, Vu Clicquot at 541.49, and First General at 541.80, which means, of course, our first seeds, one through five, are going to come out in our championship race. Exactly, so the Kennedy crew will be back for a second race tonight. So, uh, race number three, the first men's race of the day. In first position, fine strokes, plaster and painting, time of 907.01, Belfour, 923.27, NTV, 928.78, so a five second gap there. I know that NTV crew is gonna be looking to close that gap tonight, and I didn't see those last two, sorry. Well, I, I know the last one came in at just over 10, and uh, having watched this, depending on the official time versus unofficial time, it looks like uh, there's, a, you're, there's only a couple of seconds between um, first in, in, in race four and last in race three. So when the official times come out, there might be a little bit of an unexpected thing there. It, it looks like maybe 10.03, somewhere around there. So fingers crossed if you're with NL Power. Yeah, that's right. Fingers crossed and a big congrats to the... Um Kennedy crew for breaking that barrier from 5.32 to 5.30. You can see it was only two seconds, um, and they got themselves into the championship race. So congrats to Puchko Pharmacy on a great uh, great season. Yeah. Okay. So these times, of course, that we are seeing, those are the official times. What I was talking about is the official times for the fourth race is not out quite yet. So we don't, we still not 100% sure who's in that top five for the men later on this evening. Yeah, so, we think it's going to be the first, the same five crews from the first uh, men's race of the day. But like you said, Newfoundland Power are hoping to have cracked that yeah. first top five position. And our last racers, of course, now they're swinging up against they're about to get out they're going to try and catch a breath they're going to rest themselves and again let's take a moment we'll talk about some of our sponsors the crowd is hooping and hollering you in the background some teammates are all very happy to see you that of course is the legend katie that we were talking about a moment ago so let's talk again for a second about the anglican east uh diocese as a regatta sponsor and again i want to talk about going to the ignite red house down at the top of the pond across from the soccer field where you can go win a barbecue that was graciously donated by home depot and i'm personally going to take a break soon because i'm starting to get hungry again and the spirit of newfoundland has catered us with a whole bunch of stuff so big thanks to all those sponsors and as we queue up for the next Sobeys Female General Workers Race Number 5, we are going to take a short break and get right back to you in a moment. Uh, Mom, you said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. 
Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are.
Sobeys female general workers race. Um, in stake number one in the Miss Tubular, Cox and Daryl Putt stroke Pam Fagan. This is a sitner, sisters in fitness rowing crew. Um, Cheryl Coates, Michelle Porter, Jennifer Parsons, Sherry Lomond, and Tracy Reardon. Stake number two is P.F. Collins. Uh, in the Iceberg Gold, Cox and Mark Simmons, Stroke, Sherry Roach, no. <laughs> Jill Hampton, Elizabeth Murphy, Charlene Gooby, Tara Lynn Bolt, and Donna Billard. Stake number three in the Palmer Lou uh, is the crew Stuart McKelvey, um, Coxon Yvonne Knight, Stroke, Donna McMullen, Ashley Rumsey, Francis Manning, Renee Lester, Leanna Murphy, and Laura Daw. Stake number four is Caverner, uh, and they're rowing in the Cougar helicopter. Coxon Tim O'Neill, Stroke, Trina Tomlin, Alicia Witte, Karina Tracy, Tanya O'Neill, Dana Winters, and Laura Kiley. Stake number five, rowing in the Jerry Angels, is the Hazmasters. Cox and David King, Stroke, Cheryl Oak, Shannon Butler, Deanne Lee, Jessica Welsh, Marie Fagan, Deanna Skinner, and Don Ring. So that is race number five. The Sobeys female general workers race is off to the races here. We can see them starting. And still record conditions, record pond, no wind. It's a beautiful day here at Kitty Vitty Lake. And they're just in the middle of their start. And now we're gonna go to uh, Jason, who's gonna talk to our mayor. And hello, Mayor Danny Breen. How are you today, sir? Great, Jason, you? I'm doing fantastic, of course. We're no stranger to one another. We get an interview every time something interesting is That's happening. That's right, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't get any more interesting than the regatta. Well, I think that was that would be definitely true. And it also doesn't get a whole lot more interesting than some of the work that was put into this over the last year or so, I guess, you know, after the 200th anniversary. Yeah, as part of the 200th legacy, uh, the work was done on this phase, phase one of the Kitty Vitti uh, Park upgrade. So you see the new winner's circle here. You see the Hall of Fame, uh, a new uh, dock across uh, from the Marquee. Um, a reorganization of the North Bank with the with the trails widened and terrace so to make it better for uh, more accessible yes. and for also on regatta day for the concessionaires as well there's been a major upgrade to the dock um, and uh, just uh, just put it making a difference on, on what is a signature event for the city and uh, it now has the signature infrastructure to go with it. And a little bit of a signature on Mayor Danny Breen and so that everybody votes for you next time, right? Hey, listen, you know, the regatta is an important holiday. It's an important, iconic uh, day, uh, not only in the city, but in the province. And uh, it tugs at the heartstrings of a lot of people. There's a lot of emotion around it. And uh, just look at the crowd around the lake already. I, know, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's pretty early. I mean, we're at quarter to nine in the morning. There's already, I mean, there's got to be a couple of thousand people here. Uh, and from a race standpoint, on the heels of a year last year, where it was such record-breaking stuff, I mean, you, you and, and a 200th anniversary, like some people would anticipate, well, maybe there's a little bit of a, not a letdown, but almost like a hangover of something having been so big previously. But uh, it looks like that's definitely not the case at all. I would never say there's never a hangover associated with the regatta, but I would say that uh, even last night, the crowd down here was uh, was a fantastic crowd. And, you know, just in the whole city, there's a buzz. You know, you go from here, the George Street Festival last night uh, was, uh, was on wheels again, and we're going to move out of this into the Folk Festival and then the Buskers Festival. So it's an exciting couple of weeks to be in St. John's. So are you going to be performing down at the Buskers Festival? Uh, no, I'm going to sit it out this year. I'm going to just uh, keep my uh, keep my talents hidden. Yeah. So if you were to perform at a Buskers Festival, Mayor Danny Breen, what would your talent be? I'd say I'd be a juggler because I do that every day anyway. Oh, womp, womp. The cheesiest answer you could. You know what? I'm happy with that's the kind of That's the kind of joke that I would have made. Right. Thank you very much, Mayor. Always a pleasure. Thanks, and we'll talk to you soon. Great. Thanks very much. Back to you, Amanda. Thanks so much, Jason and Mayor Breen. What a perfect time to come back to the race. You can see in the drone shot, uh, the crews are just making their way around the turn. And we've got waiting in the wings our two guest commentators, Katie Wadden and Alyssa Devereaux, uh, will be joining us in just about five minutes. But first, we want to see these crews pick it up and get out of the turn. Um, so they're about picked up. All five had a successful turn and are picked up again and heading back to the start in about 3.20 uh, on official time.
Let's talk for a second about uh, these people who are racing right, now, yeah, uh, the stage of the career that they're in, like what, you know, because uh, I mean, we're, we're talking about a, sort, a, a different sort of, I don't want to say caliber, but a different uh, style or a different legacy, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, I had the pleasure to work with the PF Collins girls um, uh, a couple years ago, and I got to know them, and they've only started rowing in the last couple of years, so um, they're not the old veterans who've been doing this for 15, 20 years. Some of them just picked up rowing a couple years ago and um, are just having a lot of fun, getting fit, learning a new sport, um, you know, generating those kind of social ties that, you know, you really only create when you're on a team with uh, somebody. So, yeah, it's uh, certainly great to see people taking up rowing later in life. You can never, um, you can start rowing at any age uh, here at the Royal St. John's Regatta. So also in the program, people will see um, flag color. So uh, you can see there's kind of like little shark fins on the bow of the boat, which is furthest away from the coxswain. Um, and that's just to differentiate um, the boats. And because, uh, of course, the names of the boats are written on the side of them. But when they're racing, you they're, can't quite see <laughs> they're that often, text. They're often buried in water. Right. So they have those flags sticking up off the bow of the boat. So the boats are a little bit more easily identifiable. And those are written in the programs for anyone who's following along at home. Because the program, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if this is the first year they did this, but you can go to the Royal St. John's Regatta website and download the program for the 2019 regatta and follow along just like we are, see all the names of the rowers and all the boats. The and some sponsors. of the advantages of that, it, it, you'll be able to have a look at things and, and sort of see the intensity behind it, like somebody's time versus their time trial, like whether or not the expectation, if there's an upset, like that's where a lot of the intensity and a lot of the passion that comes into um, the legacy that is the Royal St. John's Regatta. Exactly, and all the different moving pieces. So every single one of these races has a different corporate sponsor. Um, we, you know, we saw the NTV satellite race, the Sobeys Female General Workers, the Chevron. Um, so these corporations are sponsoring the race, but also in some cases, uh, multiple crews. The Chevron is sponsoring the Learn to Row program. So sponsors are a huge part of this. And we have that race coming to a successful conclusion. It looks like our first place coming in on the first stake there, uh, unofficial time, or the second stake rather, unofficial time, somewhere around 540. Um, and I guess sort of, I guess around where we would have expected. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a big drop from their time trials time. So they're going to be pleased with that. Oh, okay, not official, so we're not sure. But anyway, they're they're done their race for the day, so they're um, at the top, taking in some water, recovering, trying to keep the boat from going up on the rocks. I mean, standing here in this winter circle, feeling the energy around us, and starting to feel this because the sun is starting to get up there now. We're going to need our SPF. Exactly, it's approaching nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of your friends who are going to join you. I mean, I've got to go talk to some other people for a little bit over at the Rogers Tent, and I understand that you've got some company. They're they're waiting on the side. I can see them. They don't look nervous at all. I know. I'm so excited. We have some guest commentators coming in for um, while you're up at the ignite at the top of the pond. Um, Katie Wadden, who I mentioned is a record holder in every category except female intermediate. Alyssa Devro from Logie Bay Outer Cove um, rode with these girls for ages and they're going to come help me out for the next uh, few minutes. So looking forward to that. This race just finished. Well, first we can talk about you guys in the building and the difference and moving anything we want to say. Hi, everyone. So, uh, as Jason's waiting to talk to the winners of that race, I'm here with um, Katie Wadden and Alyssa Devereaux. So, these guys were my crewmates for, uh, well, the last three years and even longer than that. Um, so this is a different regatta day for us. So Katie, just give us your perspective on how today is different from um, being a rower. 
Um, well, there's a lot less nerves involved, so that would be the first thing. Um, yeah, it was a great day. My sister rode in the first race, so um, my family came down for that. So it was really nice to cheer her on and to see her win that first race. And yeah, we're just down here with the team, taking it all in. I mean, it's the best day of the year, so yeah. It's like uh, Christmas or your birthday. Yeah, that's what uh, in, they say in Outer Cove, better than Christmas, yeah. <laughs> and I saw your name was in the program as a spare for the High Flow Drawlic Crew. So even though you weren't a full-time rower, you did uh, help them out a bit this year? Yeah, I did some sparing. Um, obviously, if your big sister asks you to spare, you say yes. So um, I did some sparing for them, and I coxed a bit. And it, yeah, it was a pleasure to, to do that for them. And of course, their other spare, um, Nancy Beaton. And when we get back, we're going to hear a little bit from Alyssa. So right now, we're going to throw back to Jason to talk to those winners. OK, so I'm standing here with the men from Newfoundland Power. Um, I mean, you pulled that one out. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been at this now since April in a couple of snow squalls and stuff like that, so we kind of put into work, so we're glad to see it paid off. Uh, I mean, coming up the pond versus the turn, coming down the pond, um, I mean, a lot of people were talking about how tight maybe second and third would be in this. I mean, are you thinking about that at all as you're coming down? Uh, you think about a lot of crazy stuff coming down the pond, going back up, but the uh, main thing is just make it. Sarah motivates us for the most part, and you just try and keep your head in the boat. So Sarah, of course, is hiding behind you and who does not want to be on television. So I think we should come up and we should talk a little bit. So describe a little bit uh, for everybody who's wa watching, like, what it's like. You're the only lady standing there holding that trophy. <laughs> Um, it's definitely thrilling, um, and you just hope that you can say the right things to motivate the guys to get them up the pond and back. Obviously, it's a mind game as well as a, like a physical game because you want to try and get them motivated to get back the pond. Getting up is one thing, but then you have to turn around and come back. So the guys did excellent today. Exceeded our expectations and our own personal team goal, so it's great. That's incredible. Also, I think it's worth noting that you are the only person on this crew that doesn't have the exact same haircut as me. Like, everybody here is so handsome. Well, I mean, I, I'm just assuming. I'm just, I'm just assuming. I'm just assuming. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all of you. Amanda, back to you. Thanks so much, Jason. So, like I said, I'm here with my crewmates and guest commentators, Katie Wadden and Alyssa Devereaux. So we were just chatting with Katie about her perspective of um, being here today at the 204th First, Royal St. John's Regatta as a participant, and also Alyssa. So, Alyssa comes from a long legacy of rowers. I'm going to interrupt for a very quick second. Most of live TV, folks. Live television. <laughs> I'm going I'm to hand this mic up. Oh, geez. Thank it's you, very, very special. Okay. Uh, so, you know, just uh, do I'll your thing. I'll see though. you guys later. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, Alyssa, tell us about yourself. Um, I guess I came from... Uh, a family of rowers. My mom and dad both met down here. Uh, they rowed a lot back in the 80s, had a few championships themselves, so I think I was born to row. <laughs> uh, and you certainly did just that. So we are going to set up the next race when it comes up here on the television. Um, as we can see, some crews up there lining up already. And so we have race number six, the North Atlantic Masters Male, Intermediate Male, Juvenile Male. So. All right, in stake number one in the broker, we have Coxon uh, Graham Roach. This is Lamb's Run Rum Crew. Graham Roach is the Coxon. Uh, number six, Bill Janes. Number five, Tim O'Neill. Number four, Daryl Ryan. Number three, Steve Ring. Number two, Ray Cadigan. Number one, Darren Hyde. And spare, Gary Collins. In stake number two, uh, this is Hearn Distributing Crew in the President's Choice Boat, Denise Carew as Cox, Michael Carew Stroke, number five, John Brocklehurst, number four, Barry Carew, number three, Jim Whalen, number two, Tony Walsh, and number one, Eric Crane and Terry Walsh as the Spear. In stake number three, we have Embrace Orthodontics Crew. Uh, they're rowing in the Newfoundland Herald Shell, Coxon, Michael Thistle, Stroke, Zachary Goss, number five, Mark Power, number four, Jeffrey Keynes, number three, Ben Yetman, number two, Luke Breen, and number one, Alex Kingsley, um, coach Anna Power, and uh, Paul Power. In stake number four, in the Smith Stockley, uh, with crew Harbor Grace Ocean Enterprises, Coxon, Fred Chafe, Stroke, Richie Baker, 
Number five, Cody Vaders. Number four, Max Barrett. Number three, Josh Neal. Number two, Mark Tetford. Number one, Lucas Lynch and Jared Slade as the spear. And last in stake number five, we have All Star Rebar rowing in the Henley shell. Uh, Coxon, Paul Ring, stroke Connor Bennett, number five, Sed Yusafse, number four, Jeff Hayward, number three, Wyatt Fowler, number two, Eva Mahoney, number one, Alex O'Brien, and a couple of spares, Mitchell Crane, Liam Dalton, and coach Susan Watts Fowler. Okay, and we want to say um, a special a shout out. In that race, we heard the name Carew. Uh, De Denise Carew, of course, helped out um, M5 in 2016. And we know that um, former rower Nikki Carew is not able to be here today going through um, some tough stuff. And I know she'd love to be down here. And we just want to say we're thinking about you, Nikki. We love you. And we hope you're feeling better soon. And when East Coast Mortgage Brokers, which is the crew that Nikki's company is sponsoring is rowing later on today we'll be sure to um send you some more good wishes then so uh to the whole crew family and especially nikki um thinking about you lots nikki and we love you okay and as we have the official results um being announced behind us i'm gonna ask katie a little bit as a stroke what it's like when you're lining up so we can see these crews on the screen lining up what is that like uh, well, we're actually talking a little bit about that this morning. Um, it's a pretty surreal experience when you're lining up. Um, you really are just in your head and in your boat. So, you know, I can't remember anybody around me or any of the crowd or anything. I, I think it's, yeah, a little bit of tunnel vision in there. Um, really just focused on the calls from the coxswain, um, you know, listening to the announcements and everything. So, yeah, lots, lots of focus inside the boat. What about you, Alyssa? Yeah, we were, Katie and I were chatting about this earlier, but uh, similar experience. It was, it was kind of different to have so much fun on Lakeside uh, while everyone was lining up because I didn't know that people were doing that when we were in the boat. So yeah, it was, it was pretty fun just hanging out, watching everyone get ready. Certainly is a different perspective when you're used to being in the boat and now you're on the sidelines. So uh, just to give people at home an idea, Katie and Alyssa would row six and five, and I would row in the back. So like Jason and I were talking about earlier, at this point, one and two are touching to try and keep the boat straight or um, to make the boat straight. And um, six and five are just going over the race plan in their head and getting ready to execute what they've practiced all year Bernard, to do. Please come forward for presentation of the silver medal. So Katie, tell us a little bit about, I was talking about all the records that you hold. How does it feel? Um, yeah, I mean, it's something that you don't really think about. It just kind of, I guess, happened over the years. I, you know, it's crazy to think we still have the midget and juvenile records for uh, Noble Drilling, which was a, a very the, special team for me. Uh, Ron Bolin was our cox, and anyone that knows him, he's a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal coach in person. Um, so those were some pretty special years for me, and it's great to see now the uh, squirts and the midget teams all coming up through. Um, yeah, I mean, that really changed my life, I guess. I've been involved for maybe 18 or plus years now. And um, yeah, those early memories are very special, setting, the, setting those times. And I can say the exact same for me, you know, rowing since 95. The influence that um, the excellent coaches and friends have had on my life and um, rowing as a sport, what it does for, what's done for me, and I'm sure you guys can say the same. We also rode together on um, O'Day Earl in 2007 with Coxon, Ronnie Brennan, um, and every year before the regatta, we visit um, Ronnie's gravesite out in Outer Cove, and um, just a special shout out to him. He gave so much to the regatta over the course of his life, and we just really appreciate all the opportunities we've been given here. Um, so Alyssa, talk a bit about the cruise you've been on. Um, I guess I started out rowing with uh, a few crews. Uh, we rounded up a few friends from Outer Cove that I grew up with. Um, I think James Cadigan was the, the one who actually taught us how to row and, and then Daniel took the reins and he was our coxswain in the next couple years. Um, so that was super fun and uh, 
eventually I, I joined the slide seat program and uh, I rode with JAC in 2009. Who was and your coach that year? <laughs> it was you, Amanda. <laughs> we had the best coach ever that year. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was my first championship and then I rode with M5 in 2011. Uh, took a bit of a break and then back again with M5. 2016 to 18. And so. speaking, I would be amiss if 2009 with the other coach of the JAC crew was John Smythe, of course. Um, and talking about how the Royal St. John's Regatta, the first Wednesday in August, it gets in your blood, and no matter where you are in the world, you're going to think about it. So I had John Smythe writing this morning from Australia, so sending a special hello to John, who was another coach of um, the 2009 crew. And we're going to watch the start of this race now. So. Um, what what should these rowers be thinking about now from your guys perspective uh really just you know all just listening to the coxswain all eyes on them um you know just starting your breathing and sitting up and yeah just getting ready for that gun to fire just total focus right now inside the boat there we go And the start, a lot of teams um, have their own different strategies for the start. So often uh, we start off with a half, half, three quarter full. So those are shorter strokes really to get the boat going up to top speed. And lots of crews have different, different ways to do it. A lot of people do uh, seven fast strokes and then you do seven hard strokes and seven long strokes. And then you settle into your, uh, to your rate. For the, for the body of the race. So for us, that was around a 34 stroke race. For the men's, it's a little bit lower, maybe around a 32, 30. We, and every crew is different. There's optimal race rates. For us, it was a 34. So as they pass the minute mark here, they're, they're getting close to settling, settling in. I know we didn't like to use that term, but they're hitting their stride of their race rate as they go through the body of the race. So uh, one strategy we use as rowers is to break up the race into quarters. So do you want to talk a little bit about that, Alyssa? Yeah, sure. Um, the second quarter of the race is definitely tough because you just had a really quick start. Um, the adrenaline's now kicked in and over with, and now you're starting to feel some pain all over the body. Um, once you get through the second quarter, you're into the turn, uh, and then from there, you know you're on the home stretch. So I'm sure that a lot of people at home are wondering about the turn and how it feels for the different rowers in the boat, and we're going to be seeing another turn, um, as we do in every race, but coming up shortly. So. Um, I know on the bow side where Alyssa and I would sit, we would just row as hard as we can. But what's a bit more unfamiliar for people is the concept of holding water. So on the stroke side, when you're asked to hold water, Katie, what does that mean? Uh, you got to hold a lot of water. <laughs> the most water. <laughs> the most water. Um, so yeah, I kind of dig my oar down. Not too deep. You don't want to disrupt the balance or anything. That's really important for a stroke side. Is trying to keep the balance in the boat so um, the bow side doesn't what we call washing out so that's one thing that we have to keep in mind and yeah we really want to have a quick pivot so um, number six holds the most water and then number four and sometimes sometimes two but often two is just really responsible for keeping that balance uh, with the coxswain so yeah, we hold water, and um, I don't want to say it in front of my bow side teammates, but <laughs> this gives me a little bit of an opportunity to uh, catch my breath and uh, to regroup myself. And then again, just you know, you're focused on the coxswain telling you when you're gonna pick right back up and join your team. Um, so it all happens obviously very, very quick. Um, and why is it important to maintain the balance on the turn? You might think, oh, the boat is stopped. It doesn't matter if it's balanced or not. Why is that important? Uh, bow side will let you know why it's important. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important because if it's uh, tipped towards stroke side, it's really hard for bow side to bury their blades, um, which in turn means you can't get as strong of a stroke around and uh, the turn will be slower. The turn will be slower. So we need <laughs> so to... Balance is the name of the game in rowing. Exactly. Definitely. Um, this looks like a great race here. Three crews uh, oh, yeah. pretty close to each other. They're almost uh, at the half half kegs there now. You guys keep talking. I gotta go. This is where the pain uh, really, really starts to kick in. And you just kind of have to rely on your training here to really just push through. 
Uh, you go into a, a different kind of zone right here. Wow, what a pond over on uh, stake one. That's excellent. Excellent rowing by all the crews out there. So now they're starting to gear up, get ready for that turn. We often would do hard strokes, so as you come up to the turn, you really want to be at max speed. Um, so we would often, or coxswain would call for what we call power tens. And that kind of lets everybody know we're on the same page and we're really going to start to push that boat together. Wow, what a race. Excellent. Wow, look at that pond. That's a dream pond right there, record-breaking pond for sure. So, so here's the kegs. They're probably gearing up now. Um, Excellent. So we're going to throw it over to Amanda now. She's with the winners of the last race. Katie and Alyssa, so we're here with the winners of the last race, the PF Collins. Um, I'm going to get them to introduce themselves and have a little chat. So, I'm the Cox, Mark Simmons. Number four, Elizabeth Murphy. Sherry Stroke. Number three, Charlene Gooby. Number five, Jill Hampton. Number one, Donna Billard. Number two, Tara Bolt. Manager, Andrew Kellaway. All right, Mark, how was it out there? Uh, it was fantastic. I couldn't be more proud than the girls. I mean, they dug down and took it home. So these girls haven't been rowing very long. Uh, tell me about how, how many years have you guys been rowing? Tell us about your crew. Uh, well, we started rowing uh, last year. Uh, all of us, most of us were brand new, didn't have a clue about rowing. Uh, and with the help of everyone down here, uh, we learned and you know did our own thing, did a lot of research, and pulled the gold out of it. That is amazing. And I know this isn't your first uh, race this year. You guys also competed uh, in some out-of-town regattas. How was that? Uh, that's good. It's a good uh, learning experience. Uh, we ended up getting silver in both, actually, so uh, uh, we wanted to get our gold finally. So what was different today? How would you take yourself from silver to gold? Tell me. Uh, I guess we just pushed and pushed. You know, I've been pushing this, these girls for the last three or four months, and I guess they finally listened. <laughs> they finally listened. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys have had a few laughs this season for sure. So, um, what what was different from uh, your first season as a crew to your second year? What like how have you evolved and come together? Well, it really helped. We started the season kind of having an idea of what to do. You know, <laughs> we came into last year, we didn't even know how to row together. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we uh, you know starting off it was pretty good, and then we just built on it from there. And also, we, I know PF Collins is a big sponsor of the regatta, but also um, tell me about your relationship with the PF Collins organization. Yeah, well, every one of our team members, except for one, we all work there. So uh, we got a really good relationship, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, Susan Collins is the um, a sponsor and also a member of the regatta committee and new mom. So hopefully maybe we'll chat with her a bit later. But I'm going to get back to the races here. And thank you guys and congratulations. Thank you. All right, so it looks like uh, stake two is in the lead here. It's still a close race. Um, we're, we're in the last quarter here now. This is when it starts to really get exciting. The crews are really starting to pour it on. And it looks from our angle that stake two might have a slight advantage. And they're starting to gear up now for the finish. So again, the finish, oh, sorry, we're going through the women's kegs. Uh, which technically is the finish, I guess, for the men's, uh, the men's course, as it is longer. Um, again, uh, different teams have different strategies for uh, the finish of the race. I know for our crew, uh, we kind of take it again like a start. And so we do those seven hard strokes and seven long strokes, and then we'd finish with a big seven quick. So you might start to see now with the crew starting to bring up that stroke rate. Basically putting any bit of energy they have left on that oar. It's always very exciting when you hear the coxswain say that you're at the marquee because you know then you're ready to bring it home. It's hard to watch the, these races. You wish you were out there. Yeah, that pond is amazing. Because they're just coming into our view here, uh, about 10 strokes from the, the jog. So these. These crews are definitely getting ready to start their finish if they haven't already. In such a close race, they might have they might have started that already. Wow, what a race. 
Excellent. So it looks like nice, long, strong strokes coming from stake two there, keeping it nice and composed. And they're doing a great job. I'm sure the coxswains are really starting to bring on, pour on the intensity now, making those really important last few calls. I know that we used to try to take seats from other crews, so we'd get the coxswain to yell out, okay, we're at seat number three. Give me the next seat. And that really kind of kept you in the competition. You can see by the, the looks on their faces now, they're really putting everything they have into it. Oh, it's so exciting to be in tight races. There's no better feeling. My heart rates up for them. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, great time. And it still looks from maybe stake one. It's hard to tell from this angle. What can you see, Alyssa, looking at? I think uh, stake two still has the lead, but uh, there's definitely oh, only a half a boat so length exciting. between the other. This is what the regatta is all about right here. Just battling it out, those last few strokes. Oh, bring up that rate. Let's go, let's go. Oh, this is an awesome oh, race. This is amazing. It's going to wow. make you outstroke the other crew. Wow. Maybe, yes, stake three could have been there. It's wow, hard to say, Katie. Incredible. <laughs> I think this might be a mix too of uh, a master's race and a, a younger crew oh, as well. Okay, so got you. that's when you really get those low times when you have that stiff competition and you kind of forget about your body and you just kind of give it everything you absolutely have. That's yeah, what, there's nothing like good competition yeah, on the pond. And rowing, you know, if you're a rower, you're a competitor and you're ready to pull it all out in the line. It's definitely one of the hardest sports. I've played a lot of sports growing up and you know, there's nothing like nothing like the sport of rowing and what it does to your body. You got to be a special kind of person, I think, for <laughs> yeah, to enjoy, for sure. Yeah. And we have our last two crews coming in here now. They're looking strong as well. Excellent. Really nice to see all the men's crews out. And nice long strokes. Again, just listening to those coxswains for those last few calls. Every crew right now trying to get their best time of the year. It's always nice to finish on a high note on Regatta Day. Especially on such a nice pond. Yeah. To really see how day. good you could be. And there we go. All five crews are in. What a race. Okay, we're going to throw it over to Amanda now. Hi. So here at Rogers, we're lucky enough to have volunteers who volunteer their time for Rogers, but also have other lives in the community as well. So we are here with Gordon Skiffington of the Canadian Blood Services. Hi, Gordon. Thanks for having me this morning. Can you tell us about uh, what is your role with the Canadian Blood Services? So I'm the local territory manager for Canadian Blood Services in Newfoundland and Labrador. We need 14,000 donors every year to come to uh, donor centers around the province and here in St. John's uh, for hospital patients just for uh, local provincial need. So my role is to ensure that, you know, we have uh, donors available uh, so that we're able to supply hospital patients with the uh, blood, blood products that they require. Very important for sure. How can people in the St. John's and surrounding area get involved and donate? So our donor center is located at 7 Wicklow Street. We're open five days a week, Tuesday to Saturday. Uh, they can go online, blood.ca, uh, or they could download the Give uh, Life app, and they can find donor centers in their area, um, and they can even book an appointment. And we're here at the uh, regatta today. We're uh, on the opposite side of the lake across from the, uh, the boathouse. Um, we're going to be giving out information about where people can donate, we're also going to be uh, booking appointments if somebody wants to drop by, book an appointment. If they're not sure if they're eligible or not, we can answer eligibility uh, questions as well. And we're actually partnering with uh, KIND uh, this summer. So uh, we do have a campaign. It's Do the KIND Thing, Become Part of uh, Canada's Lifeline. And we're going to be uh, distributing KIND bars, uh, healthy KIND snacks uh, to uh, people attending the regatta today. Well, that's very kind of you. 
<laughs> it certainly is. So in his hands, he's got some beautiful t-shirts and also some kind bars. Uh, so you can visit the Canadian Blood Services tent and get some of those fun items, which is, uh, I didn't catch, located where? So we're located uh, at the regatta today, opposite of the, uh, the boathouse. Our donor center on Wicklow Street is open today as well. So three to seven this evening after you're done down at the, uh, the lake, uh, if you want something to do this afternoon, you know, we invite people to drop into our donor center at Wicklow Street. Very important need, very important service and work that you're doing. Uh, thanks so much for being here. I am going to get back to the races here because we have a race coming up the pond. So I'm going to throw it back to Katie and Alyssa um, to cover the end of that race. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks so much. Hey, and welcome back. We're just going to go through the race results there now. Uh, so this is the first race of the day. We're just doing a little recap. So High Flow Drolic Limited came in at 5.04.04. Awesome time. Incredible. The Cal Group, uh, just about a boat length behind them at 5.10.47. And Don Burke in third, just squeaked by at 5.24.71. And number four was Steers Insurance at 5.25.37. And uh, fifth place in the first race of the day, Puchko Pharmacy at 532.13. I do believe that they may have been bumped out of the championship race. Uh, yep, race number two has Kennedy Cleaning Services at 530.52. So they actually currently have a berth in the championship race. So that's super exciting. Um, Atlantic Towing, 533.78. Another great time. And India Gate in third for this race, 540.04. And you click <laughs> sorry 541 49 and first general in fifth place at 541 80 i apologize for the pronunciation there and uh the the third race of the day so this is the senior men's uh race the first one today fine strokes plaster at 90701 another great time um belfour in second place at 92327 ntv uh, 928.78, Smith Stockley 942.52, and Rakana Petroleum Consulting at 10 flat 92. So awesome racing. And race number four, Newfoundland Power at 10.03.72. So it looks like they just missed uh, squeaking into the championship race. Geotech Services in second place for this race, 10.12.74. Team Broken Earth, uh, M5, 1033-33, Piatto Pizzeria, uh, fourth place, 1055-35, and Browning Harving in fifth place at 1108-99. And race number five, so this is um, the third female race of the day. In first place, P.F. Collins, 547-60, Kavarner, 555-06, Third place, Sisters in Fitness, 556.82. And fourth place, Stuart McKelvey Crew in 557.33. Fifth place, Has Masters at 602.38. Looks like a pretty close race there. Um, so I guess we're waiting on the quick break. Oh, we're going to go for a quick break right now um, before the start of the next race. So race number seven of the day, coming up soon. Thanks everybody for tuning in. of the pond. It is a perfect 
day for regatta. Yeah, don't you wish you were rowing this year, Katie? Oh God, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to see this pond for sure. All right, so we're just setting up for the uh, Masters female race of the day. Um, in stake number one in Miss Tubular, we have the Wedgwood Physiotherapy Power Conditioning Crew. Um, Coxon, Melissa Snow, she has quite a few crews out here today. Stroke, Susie Ennis. Uh, number five, Kim Marr. Number four, Colin Warford. Susan Quinton, Jane Kelsey, and Debbie Shortle. In stake number two in the Pomerleau, we have TLC Home Care. Uh, Coxon, Derek Mercer. Stroke, Mary Rideout. Kelly Knight, Jennifer Godden. Uh, Kim Hocko, Paula Ellsworth, and Patricia Dold. Stake number three in the Jerry Angel Boat. We have John Callahan, Hanlon Realty, Coxon, Robert Greeley, Tina Lowe Walsh, Kathy Power, Debbie Bragg, Trixie Callahan, Angela Greeley, Michelle Hopkins Lovey. In stake four, we have Boulder Books, McDonald's, Home Hardware, Cox, Russ Tutton. Stake five, Compel Salt, uh, Crew, Cox, Phil Anthony. Uh, we just had to rush through that. We're just getting the race started here now. Looks like they're all lining up. The nerves are definitely set in here. One and two touching up. So, touches from one and two, a really important job there. Can often bring on a little bit of nerves. Uh, so the crews are touching up and again, they're just listening to their coxswains and waiting for that gun. So it looks like stake one uh, a little bit late coming up. Uh, but it's a great day for coxswains. Uh, this can be very stressful if there's any kind of side wind or wind at all uh, blowing the boats around. So, you know, we shouldn't have any delays with the regatta this year. Uh, this, the, the setup can often cause the delays. Um, so again, with this beautiful pond, it looks like it should be pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, nice for the spectators as well. It's not too hot today, but looks yeah. like it'll be sunny all day. I think last year it was, what, over 30 degrees, I remember. Oh, and here we go, and they're off. So race number seven, the Tim Hortons Female Masters race. So as you can see, um, starting off that race, you have those few quick short strokes. Then you get your boat up to top speed and they are off. So this is when your adrenaline's rushing, your heart's pumping, and then you start to settle in and you find your rhythm. And this is a really fun part of the race. I love the, I love the start of the race, doing that big blast out. So we've got some good crews here. We've got some veterans. I saw Eileen Collingwood's name and Betty Shea. Um, they started off rowing, I know, when I was a young girl with my mom's crew, so it was pretty cool to see see those names again still around the regatta. I think that's what the regatta does to you. You know, you get pr pretty addicted to this sport. There's a great sense of community down here and multi-generational, so it's, you know, we have Tom Power, uh, he was the, one of the boathouse guys. I think he saw me grow up over the years, so it's really nice to have uh, those figures around. All right, so now we're going to throw it over to Amanda. We have Jake Thompson. Uh, he's the producer of NL Now. So here we go. Thanks so much, Katie and Alyssa. As Katie mentioned, I'm here with Jake Thompson, who's the producer of NL Now. Good morning, Jake. Good morning. Uh, so tell us a little bit about NL Now. Yeah, so uh, NL Now, it's a puppet-hosted talk show, and uh, I perform all the puppets and all that type of thing, and uh, we uh, feature all kinds of local celebrities, and there's a places to go segment and lots of fun stuff. So you are the man behind the mask, as they would say. Yeah. That's great. So this is a show on Rogers, um, but it wasn't always on Rogers. Tell me, how did you get started? Yeah, so I always loved the Muppet Show and puppets and everything. So uh, when I was 11, we started a YouTube channel. And uh, after doing a few months of that, we decided to send the proposal into Rogers for the show, and everyone loved it, so that's where we are now. That is excellent. So where did your love of, uh, you know, Muppets and Puppets, how did you take it to the next level of just watching it to doing it? Yeah, well, uh, I don't really know. It just sort of happened. But, uh, yeah, it was like I always loved and I was always watching the Muppet show and doing puppet shows at family parties and all that sort of thing. So I wanted to 
make something myself to uh, showcase it all. To that is excellent. And how many seasons um, is NL now been running? Yeah, so uh, right now we're filming for our fourth season, which is set to premiere in September. And who are some of the local celebrities you've had on lately? Yeah, so uh, lately uh, we've been busy booking people for season four. So we've had Corey Crew from the Newfoundland group, Corey and Trina in the studio. We had the Drina. We're going to have the Drina Harvey band in and lots of other great local musicians. Well, there's lots of local talent in Newfoundland, so it's great that you're able to uh, showcase some of that. Yeah. So um, where is the puppet today? Yeah, Gary is busy at home. He's a... Uh, I think he didn't want to wake up so early, so I think he's going to come down a little later on for some spin tickets and everything. All right. Well, you seem like a pretty young guy to have your own TV show, so congratulations and thanks for coming down to chat with us today. Yes, thanks for having me. And we're going to get back to the races now, so I'm going to throw it back to um, Katie and Alyssa. All right. So it looks like uh, all five crews are out of the turn now on the way back. Looks like stake number one, um, Wedgewood Physiotherapy and Power Conditioning are in the lead right now. Um, close race though, I think stake number two, TLC Home Care are uh, gunning for second place at the moment. Yeah, it looks pretty much like their time trial time. So uh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five in that order. Uh, looks like four and five might be pretty close there. And again, we're coming up to that marquee for stake number one. So you'll probably start to see that rate coming up. And we've got a nice side angle shot of the crew on stake one there. Oh, very strong strokes. Excellent rowing from stake one. Melissa Snow is an uh, experienced coxswain down here, so she's probably uh, well into their finish now. Speaking of the coxswains, uh, I heard the other day that um, sometimes the coxswains are yelling so loud that the residents in the in the nearby places who are living around the lake can actually hear the coxswain. So, um, yeah, it's it's if you live by the lake, you're committed to the regatta in one way or the other, if you want to be or not. Oh, definitely. Sometimes just coming down here, jogging around, and you can hear the coxswains yelling, yelling out their power tens. I so, mean, I love it, but <laughs> maybe not if I was sleeping. And also pre-regatta, or regatta eve as they call it, um, while many are out playing regatta roulette, they're starting to become an increasing tradition for people to come to Lakeside down here at Kitty Vitty Lake the night before the regatta. So I know that uh, at least one of you was here last night, so. Yeah, we were saying um, today, talking to a lot of people, it really seems that it's becoming a two-day event. There was so many people down around, which is great to see for the vendors and the live music. It was really great energy. And here we come, stake number one, powerhousing it in, excellent rowing. Awesome time too. They uh, shaved off quite a bit from wow, time trials, about 20 seconds or so. Row. They're gonna be happy with that. Oh, for sure. And stake two coming in. Second place, another and fast time as well. Oh, it's great to see these fast times ending this season. Yeah. Sure, we'll see lots of smiling faces. And as we watch the third and fourth place crews uh, tee up to the finish line there, I'll just take a moment to acknowledge, no, that's not the 200th regatta, but this year does mark the 40th anniversary of the women's championship race and the 70th anniversary of um, women participating in the regatta. So I'm so glad that my uh, two teammates <laughs> who had no idea they'd be doing this commentary today uh, are here with me and helping me out. Um, this is just great. A great way we to do celebrate. anything for you, man. <laughs> That's it. Women's We're rowing. supposed to be out on a run right now, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the 40th anniversary of women in the championship race and the 70th anniversary of women participating in the Royal St. John's Regatta, but it, does, it hasn't always been the same. So um, the women's course used to be straight from the kegs at the bottom of the pond, what is currently the full course um, buoys that get turned around and they would row straight up. But then around, um, I think it was the 70s, there was a change and it went to the current course. And of course it was um, four buoys at the beginning. Did you guys row when it was four buoys? I can't remember if I no. did or not. I don't oh. think I did. No. So I'm older than you, so I did. <laughs> and the, we were just uh, shortly behind, yeah. 
And the, of course, as participation grew and there were more crews, they added a fifth buoy. So we see um, one stakes one, two, three, four, five um, now. And so we see some of those women's teams coming in now. They won't be participating in the championship t race tonight, uh, but they did just have a wonderful row. Like Alyssa mentioned, shaved a ton of time off of their uh, championship time. And uh, yeah, I'm here with Katie Wadden and Alyssa Devro, um, who just jumped in here to help me <laughs> cover this 201st Royal St. John's regatta on Rogers Television. So what do you think um, these people are thinking about right now? Oh, I'm sure they're thrilled with this race. Uh, I don't think you could ask for much better conditions and a better day for spectators as well. Uh, I'm sure they're just excited to have it over with and, and enjoy the day. They yeah. all rode excellent times. I mean, this for me is uh, when you finish that race, you just take in everything, everything around you. You, you know, you just want time to slow down. You don't want to get off the pond at all. This is where you really, you know, soak it all in and you get to see your family cheering from the sidelines. And I mean, really, there's there's truly no better feeling than than being out there after your race. It's a very special day for a lot of people. A lot of a lot of hard work goes into preparation for the regatta. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, what kind of times that you're rowing. There's a lot of sacrifice that goes into this sport because it is a team sport. Um, lots of logistics. I know with our crew, you know, planning times to row and family and everything. Uh, it's it's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of dedication, so it's really nice to take in these special moments. Oh, they're there, waving to all their fans. It's awesome. And they all have to be happy. I mean, they look so strong out there. It's great to see these women, you know, being competitive and being active throughout their whole lives. It's very inspiring. And we heard from Bradley Power this morning, who said that 80% of the crews are um, female. So. Perhaps in future years, if the regatta committee um, opens it up and, and allows um, the women to row on the full course and men to row on the half course, maybe that might be an incentive to draw some more oh. men's crews back to get the balance back to 50-50. Definitely. We've, hear, we've heard that a lot over the years. I know like my dad talking about it and um, him wanting to get some of his friends into it. But yeah, that full course can be quite intimidating. And so I think introducing the half course and the full course bo to both genders is going to be, you know, there's lots of talk of it and it's really, really exciting. I know, I know I'll come back if there's a long course for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, future regattas, um, they will definitely keep this tradition, but maybe some changes to the sport. Um, and we'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsors here at Rogers. The Anglican East Diocese uh, is a regatta sponsor. Um, we also have Home Depot, who's um, donated a barbecue, which you can enter to win at the Ignite uh, Rogers TV booth at, by the starting kegs. And also keeping all the Rogers volunteers fed today is the Spirit of Newfoundland um, Catering Company. So big thanks to them. And again, um, I want to thank Katie and Alyssa. I literally just conned them into coming on the, the television. <laughs> They're supposed to be running right now because even though we're not rowing this year, we all like to keep fit and have fun. So big special thank you to my girls. And uh, we are going to take a break. Thanks. <laughs>
couldn't let them go just yet. <laughs> Katie and Alyssa, Katie Wad and Alyssa Devereaux, uh, members of the M5 Championship Rowing Team, and me too, uh, <laughs> are here with us. And it's fitting because Katie Wad, current record holder of the female juvenile record, um, and we're going to set up the Domino's Pizza Juvenile Female Race, race number eight. So, Alyssa? Sure, in stake number one in the broker, uh, we have RBC, Dominion Securities, Coxon, Michael Thistle, Stroke, Claire Uden, Gabriella Mate, Kate Kelly, Caitlin Hall, Sarah Healy, Alana Gale. Uh, this looks like a slide seat crew there. Stake number two in the Newfoundland Herald, we have Keep Cool Refrigeration, Coxon, Leon Murphy, Claire Green, Maddie Dyer, Kristen Wall, Megan Fiander, Cassie Stagg, Tori Pike, and Caitlin Abbott as a spare. In stake number three in the Oz Network, we have Martin Surveys, Cox and Sarah Emberley, Stroke Hannah Martin, Haley Kavanaugh, Tessa Thorne, Michaela Kerwin, Maria Dumphy, Caitlin Dalton, and Spare Shiana Goss. In stake number four in the Henley Boat, we have St. Bond's Girls Crew, Coxon Deanne Smith, Stroke Molly Ann Smith, Kate Bruce, Alicia Mason Quinton, Susanna Pollock Finley, Ishwana Walsh, and Ava Bishop. In stake number five, we have the Carbonier Home Hardware Crew in the Smith Stockley Shell, uh, Coxon Rebecca Vokey, Stroke Jasmine Stone, Taylor Farrell, Aliana King, Nikita Stone, Jamie Grimes, and Erica Butt. And again, this is the juvenile female race number eight, Domino's Pizza. So I know what it means, but for the viewers at home, when you introduce the crew on stake one, RBC Dominion Securities, you said it was a slide seat crew. So tell us a bit about that. Um, slide seat, uh, so the slide seat crew, we would know because uh, we're involved in the slide seat program as well and they would participate in different kind of regattas. They could be a part of the junior competitive program. Um, and yeah, they would complement their fixed seat rowing with slide seat. And the three of us, and based on our experience, we know how important slide seat is. So it's great to see um, all these sports and midget crews. And we uh, deeply encourage to try out the slide seat program. Um, slide seat is an incredible way to travel with the sport, to go to different regattas, and to see the competition. And Newfoundland always does extremely, extremely well. Um, in fact, in 2009, uh, we have Alyssa Devereaux, who was a medal winner at the 2009 Canada Games. So Alyssa, can you just tell us a bit about that? Uh, sure, yeah. So in 2009, uh, at the PEI Canada Summer Games, um, myself and uh, Jane Brody, Steph Davis, and Allison DeLong rode in a coxless four. Uh, so we actually have, instead of having a cox in the boat, there's a there's a rudder on uh, number four's foot, so to steer the boat. Um, so that was a thousand meter course, or 1,200 actually, I think. And um, yeah, we came. Uh, third place so we got a, the first medal for Newfoundland at those games that was super exciting oh, and for incredible. a team from Newfoundland it felt like a gold for us oh, <laughs> so as you can tell when Alyssa's is talking about in the boat with no coxswain and one of the rowers is actually responsible for steering the boat it is kind of nice to sit in a fixed seat boat and all you have to worry about is pulling uh, so we have provincial coach Paul Power is also the manager of the RBC Dominion Security so he's a provincial coach of the slide seat program and we would certainly encourage uh, anyone who's interested in rowing um, if you have a crew and want to come try out fixed seat great and if you're maybe just one or two people and want to come down and check out the slide seat program uh, that would be a great way to get involved as well yeah they have lots of uh, youth learn to row and adult learn to row so all ages are welcome and uh, I know I was employed by the slide seat program over the years it's a great summer job growing up I remember, um, Katie, you said about, you know, just living for rowing during those summers, and this would be about the age you were. These girls are juvenile females, so um, can you remember, I mean, I know we're all in our, our 30s now, almost, Alyssa, but can you remember what it was like to be uh, in the juvenile age? Oh, definitely. We lived down at the pond. Um, we used to try to see how many spins we could get in 
you know, four spins a day and come home and, you know, fill up on food and go back down to the lake. And it was the best way to spend your summers. And again, it's multi-generational down here. So you're hanging out with your parents and, um, you know, lots of very influential people in your life. You know, we always look up to the Siobhan Duffs and Oz FM and Jungle Gym. So, yeah, it's just an incredible community to be a part of at such a young age. So certainly at that time when we were walking around as juvenile females, we would be looking up to, you know, the um, senior rowers as role models. Oh, and yeah. I remember watching, you know, the Butternut Crew, the Key and Tex, the Oz FM. I mean, these have legacies of um, just back and forth duels and admiring the athletes as we'd be down around here learning to row. Yeah, I remember, you know, if I got a chance to talk to Siobhan Duff, that, that was a great day for me as a kid. I hope she's watching because <laughs> we had the pleasure to go down and stay oh, yes. with Siobhan Duff Hi, and Jim Hibbs and their family in Tennessee when we traveled as a rowing team to uh, Tennessee to participate in the Head of the Hooch uh, head race, which is actually instead of a 1,250 meter course like we see here on the half course or even a 2,500 meter course on the men's full course, the uh, head race is anywhere from five to six kilometers. So, um, you know, it's about a 20 minute row. And we went and joined Siobhan and some of her teammates at the Lookout Rowing Club. Uh, we formed some composite eights and fours, and they also rode in um, the double and the quad. And then we rejoined with them uh, when we went to Worlds this past fall yeah, in Florida. They're absolutely incredible people to have in the, to support the Newfoundland rowing community. I think there was 18 of us uh, at her house one year uh, at the uh, head of the Hooch Regatta. So, yeah. She was calling her house the Newfoundland Embassy yeah. in Tennessee <laughs> and it's mandatory flag. screeching. Yeah, it, it was really Walsh great. And the Hearn distributing crew please come forward to the winner's circle. So Gary it's a Walsh. bit of commotion again here now as a, we gear up for another medal presentation. Um, but certainly, with just uh, touching more on our experience at Worlds, um, this experience that you see today of these athletes lining up under these, you know, fun but stressful and pressureful circumstance, mm -hmm. it prepares you to compete at any level. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. Nothing beats the nerves of Regatta Day. I don't think there's very much comparable to that. And you can only learn by doing it. So. Um, you know, big so props to Walsh, all these athletes the coming out here today, Walsh, coming out all Walsh. season, training, practicing, putting in the long hours, the blood, sweat, and tears to get ready uh, for this today. Yeah, it's incredible to see these young uh, female athletes out here competing. Again, this is where our friendships have been formed. I know we're three of us are going to be lifelong friends, and it all happened down here at the lake. So it's nice to see all these young crews out here together. And not only did it give us opportunities to travel to places like Tennessee and Florida to row down there, but we also have rowed in the St. Phillips Regatta, the Placentia Regatta, the Harbor Grace Regatta, the Portugal Cove Regatta. Fogo Island even had us once in 2016. <laughs> we went out and did the punts, uh, and that was just an awesome experience. So lots of nerves here as they're starting to line up for the race. So are they going to start to call, or are you all ready? And the gun will go off. So I know um, they've, they're having different guest announcers. I know last year in one race, they had the, our Lieutenant Governor Judy Foote announce one race. I believe our race, um, Chris Andrews from the Shannon oh. Ganook Band did the start. I'm not sure who was the guest starter for that race, but they're off in one way or the other. So what we tend to see in the juvenile races is a bit of a higher stroke rate. Um, like Katie mentioned, the senior crews are racing at around a 32, 34, um, maybe a little lower around the 30s for the men's. But these juvenile girls, um, their bodies aren't fully developed yet. So if they don't have the, um, the fully developed strength, they're going to be getting their speed from rate. So we can see stroke rates of 36, 37. I think some of the squirt crews are rowing in the 40s. Yeah, I mean, definitely at that age, we were, yeah, around the 37, 38, 38 stroke rate, which, you know, you have to be pretty fit to, to maintain that rate. But I'm sure these girls have been training pretty hard all summer. Um, lots of good rowing. It looks like from our angle that stake three might be out um, in the lead there. 
nice, strong, quick catches coming from stake three. So that's what, you know, as a coach and a coxswain, what you're always looking for. So those nice, strong, crew. snappy catches. Timing is excellent there. And now we're into the second quarter for the female race. And, you know, the dreaded second quarter, as our crew would always say, we always have to reframe our thinking for this. This is when the pain really starts to flush into your body and you just kind of have to forget about it and listen to your cox. Wow, and stake three just really charging there. Great rowing. It's going to be tight there between one and three. So it looks like it'll be a big improvement for these young women uh, from their time trials races. So, so far, it looks like Martin's surveys is going to be slight advantage. And they're really giving it their all there. It's excellent. It's nice to see so many uh, young crews out here. Yeah, and it still looks like stake three there is in the lead, so they're starting to come up on that turn. So you might see a little bit of an increase in the stroke race. Okay, and as the juvenile females are turning around the boys and we continue to watch the race, we're going to um, throw it to Jason because he's going to talk to Dean McDonald, who's here at the regatta. Okay, I'm standing here with Mr. Dean McDonald from Newfoundland Growlers. Thanks for taking a moment, Dean. Hey, my pleasure, Jason. Um, still early in the day, but a lot of people growing. Uh, yeah. uh, you're used to seeing crowds around to watch spectator sports. We are, and uh, that's really good for the community. We're really happy to see it. Uh, a lot of excitement around the regatta. It, it seems to be picking up year after year, so that's great for uh, St. John's, great for the province, really. So, I mean, no surprise at some of the success that's coming out of the Growlers organization this year. A lot of work goes into that. Um, what, what, what's the off-season like? The off-season is a busy time for us guys there and in the office and that. It's all the preparation for the following season. We spend a lot of time working with the Leafs on what our personnel in terms of the players on ice are going to be for next season. But just getting all the promotions ready, marketing ready. So it's a, it's a busy time. So in your, in your official capacity, day-to-day um, -day, sort of, like, um, I mean, game day, summertime, prep time, like, does it change a lot? Yeah, I mean, when I got involved, I didn't think I'd be that busy, quite frankly, and it's been all-consuming. And, you know, when you make a deep playoff run, as we did this year, suddenly you're into June, and the season, we got the Leafs in for training camp in uh, September, so not a lot of time to get everything ready. And, uh, you know, above everything, as the owner, I'm probably the biggest fan. And I've, I've actually been spending a lot of time with our booster club, the uh, Growler Nation, organizing. They're going to be a big road trip next year down to Florida with a bunch of fans, so it's a lot of fun. So when the Leafs come into training camp, because I'm not sure everybody realizes um, how closely associated yeah. with the Leafs the, the, the Newfoundland Growlers are. So with them coming in town, I mean, that's a big fan base thing. It's a big oh, boost. Fantastic. It's a it's a, it's a a big opportunity to get people on board for ticket sales for the coming year. Oh, absolutely. You know, one of the things that the Leafs uh, have put a lot of time and effort into the Growlers because they see it as a developmental league for their players. They feel that there's at least three or four players on our current roster that will be NHL players. So this is a really important uh, uh, effort for them in terms of developing their players. Uh, the league is known as a goaltenders league. I know that we have a couple of guys coming in next year that have uh, Canadian junior experience. Yep. So uh, it's it's. Uh, I mean, the it was Leafs, only a couple yeah. of short years ago that Garrett Sparks yes. was it, right. So yeah. I mean, it wasn't the Growlers at the time. No, but like the same sort of affiliation. Absolutely. So I, I see where you're coming from with yeah. that, with the goaltenders league coming. Yeah, and, and you know, because they get lots of minutes down here. Yes. I mean, you saw what Garrett Tag did last oh, season. My I know he stood on his head and. And he got a massive offer over in Europe, and we're very happy in that regard. But the Leafs have a bunch of players that they, you know, they bring them into our league to work on certain. Maybe it's a defenseman he needs to work on a skating goaltender needs to work right, on something so specific. So great. it's very right, important to them. Yeah. So um, I'm a goaltender, okay. obviously not <laughs> ECHL caliber. No, we don't. We might we never know. Well, I mean, I think what we should do. 
is when uh, training camp gets going, a little towards the fall, you should bring a camera down. We'll dress me, and the guys can light me up. Well, look, we have a uh, we have the alumni coming in, the Leafs alumni. Yeah. So, and we're looking for some celebrities. So, uh, all over it. Okay, you're in. Okay, I'm in. Fun. <laughs> you heard it. He can't go back. This is live on television. Thank you very My much, pleasure. Dean. Jason, pleasure as always. <laughs> back to the races. I don't know, see, because it's a juvenile girl, but... Oh, hey, so I didn't realize we were on the air. Uh, the female juvenile uh, Domino's Pizza race number eight just came to a conclusion. It looked to me like that was a Martin Surveys who crossed the line first, followed by um, the stake one RBC Dominion Securities. But in either any case, it was a great row for um, juvenile, juvenile female uh, race number eight. Um, and we've got our next commentator who has joined us, Diana. Hi, good morning. Thanks, Amanda. So happy to be here, yeah, especially in the, the new winner's circle. It's excellent. Lots, lots, of, lots of buzz around here. It, it looks great. I mean, uh, the grand opening was yesterday, and I didn't realize how it was going to be uh, laid out here. But it's a, a great setup, I must say. It looks absolutely fabulous. You're right. So uh, tell me, uh, you have had a lot of years as a rower and as a coxswain. So just tell me a bit about your experience. Yeah, so probably about, uh, I guess, 26, 27 years. Uh, originally wow. started rowing in Placentia and then uh, moved on to St. John's and rowed with Keen Tech for many years and uh, VOFM, VOCM Hibernia. Uh, yeah, so I've had a great career, lots Here of championships and steered a lot of men's crews for Her Majesty's Penitentiary. Uh, board, some young guys. girls, you juvenile just, crews, I just saw them at their time. And uh, yeah, I just love being down here, love being part of it. So I'm not rowing this year, but when people ask you, like, are you finished rowing? You never say never, right? Because, you know, if you can become involved as a rower, as a coxswain, like you said, you're the cox of the HMP men's crews. And I'm pretty sure you have a, block, a square of your own here uh, in this winter circle. Multiple, I would say. Cool, yeah, pretty cool to see. i got to say, I'm very impressed with the regatta committee have done. Um, even it was nice to see the programs, the front of the programs, the setup. Uh, you know, identifying the layout of the boathouse and the window circle. Yeah, really nice. I thought they did a fabulous job, I must say. Definitely. And also, you mentioned you were from Placentia. I don't think I knew that, but coming up in the next race, yes. we see an old familiar Placentia name, Harold Hotel. Harold Hotel, So yeah. can you tell us about Harold Hotel? Well, which is everybody, where everyone stays, so everybody yeah. knows if they go to Regatta and Placentia, that's where they stay. The Harold Hotel is a fight to get rooms at the Harold Hotel. Um, but they're a great builder in the community. They're a great supporter. They always sponsor young crews out here. So that's actually an intermediate female crew. Um, I just I looked at the, that team before I came down here, and a lot of those young girls are hockey players, soccer players, that type of thing. So really good athletes. And uh, as I said, uh, Kenny King is their coxswain. So Kenny has many, many years as a coxswain from Placentia. So on that note, I do have to say, like Placentia lost a huge uh, volunteer this year, Tony Woodman. Uh, passed away a short time ago. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, cancer took his life. But uh, for many, many, many years, um, he was a huge, uh, you know, volunteer, coxswain, rower with the Vicente Regatta. So he, like, his loss is really felt out there. Um, and, you know, he will be missed. I must say, his girls really miss him. So I'm sure those girls will be rowing for him today. Yes. Yeah. Well, totally. And also, the Herald Hotel is a big place for brunch for the kind of senior cream crews that go out to participate in the Placentia Regatta after you finish your morning race. Your next stop is the Herald Hotel. Yeah, that's right, exactly. It's so funny, hey? Traditions with the Regatta are so, uh, are so huge, and they're the same way in Placentia. So, yeah, that's right. That is the go to spot for brunch after you row. And uh, like they certainly appreciate it, and, and they've been nothing but a positive influence in the community out there. And uh, like you said, a lot of multi-sport athletes. So in this um, intermediate female, we had we you know some of the girls are in hockey, and in the last race, I know for sure the RBC Dominion Securities. Um, some of those girls are competitive swimmers, um, maybe some gymnasts as well, figure skating. So. Rowing, just like anything, multi-sport um, at the younger ages especially can really help develop your um, kind of body awareness, strength, flexibility, agility, and I think we'll see a lot of that um, throughout the day. Yeah, I do. I find with the younger, the younger athletes for rowing, um, unlike uh, some of the senior athletes, some of the kids now, and my son plays hockey all year round, but some of these kids, it's nice. They, lose, they leave their winter sport and play their summer sport and that type of thing. I think that's really critical for young kids. Just, it just gives them a bigger awareness and it just gives them an opportunity to develop their bodies. 
you know, that much more differently because obviously the muscles you're using in the different sports, the emphasis is different. So yeah, I think it's great that the young kids like do that. They cross over their sports. Yeah, and the it almost gets into a situation where one thing complements the other. Like I know a lot of um, kids are in gymnastics, excel at figure skating, excel at um, you know swimming and uh, hockey, and then the ball sports. It all just comes together. Yep. So um, try not to pick too early and focusing really on the Sport Canada long-term athlete development um, for these young young girls, especially midget age, juvenile age, uh, it's great to see them participating in lots of sports. And as you can see, they're pulling into the dock so happy here. The smiles on their faces, the braids in their hair. Uh, this was a great morning for them. Yep, for sure, for sure. And the other crew that we have coming next in the um, Miss Tubular is called the Hampton Canada. Hampton Canada and Miss Tubular is pretty exciting for the intermediate females to be rowing in because uh, a lot of records have been set in that boat and it's definitely um, a boat of choice for a lot of the senior crews so uh, pretty cool to see that boat being used in upcoming race number nine but before we set up race number nine um, Jason is going to speak with Colleen O'Reilly from the Spirit of Newfoundland so we'll throw to Jason I'm here with Colleen O'Reilly from Spirit of Newfoundland. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, not just for having this conversation, but also for the delicious food that I've been eating thus far today. Excellent, excellent. So today I'm here with uh, Spirit of Newfoundland. We are doing the catering for Rogers uh, throughout the day, so we're keeping you guys all happy and fed. And also my niece is rowing with the Harold's Hotel team. But uh, just to tell you a little bit about Spirit of Newfoundland, we are a dinner theater company. We've been in operation for 22 years, and we are currently running 12 different shows. Six nights. 12 different shows. Six nights a week, uh, under the direction of uh, our co-owner Peter Halley and Kathy Hicks is the other co-owner. And right now we also offer screechings daily from 2:30 to 4. And the place that we work with is so beautiful. Lots of weddings, lots of uh, catering outside. As you know, you got all your food today, and right up until this evening. And, and not just um, good shows and a good venue and a great location, but there's a lot of history to the building itself. Like, it's been around for a long time. It's architecturally significant. Like, there, there's a lot of interesting stuff about the spirit of Newfoundland. Not to mention how remarkable the cast is. Oh, the cast are second to none. Uh, most of the guests leave wondering... Where did all this talent come from? You know? Why is this? I, did I just leave Broadway? Did I just leave Broadway? You know, all these people are just all local. Yes, it's local. Uh, they love what they do. They're passionate. Many different of our uh, performers and stuff are in all the different shows. And we're doing Mamas and Papas. The Carpenters just opened this summer. Uh, Alcock and Brown, the aviation show, which is the 100th anniversary of the first transatlantic flight. ABBA has been running for eight, nine years, maybe. One of my all-time favorites. Uh, oh, and the list, skeet snobs and peppermint knobs for those who are from away. So, and the are the skeets. I'm the peppermint knob, or actually Dana is. And uh, pepper knobs and skeet snobs and peppermint knobs. Yeah. And I'm the snob too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so much going on down at the Spirit of Newfoundland. And of course, uh, Spirit of Newfoundland has been partnering a little bit with Rogers TV over the years through Out of the Fog. And of course, Donnie Cody, when he started his episode of Out of Fog, filmed so much of it from the Spirit of Newfoundland. Like, we, we've had a good reputation or a good relationship for a long time. We really appreciate you coming out, doing the catering. Um, it's almost lunchtime for me, so I'm really excited about what you're bringing. Oh, I do believe it's shepherd's pie and Ooh. lasagna today. Oh shepherd's pie and lasagna. Lakeside from the Spirit of Newfoundland. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a great day. All right, Amanda, back to you. Let's talk about some racing. All right, Spirit of Newfoundland has a very important job to keep us all fed today, so thanks so much to um, the crew of them, and that was a great interview. Uh, soon we'll be setting up for the next race, which is the... Uh, Intermediate female. Yes, you can... <laughs> Go ahead, Diana. Amanda's <laughs> tired. So at stake number one, uh, we have Cox and Kenneth King, uh, stroke Tyra Lannon. Number five is Mackenzie Leonard Power. Number four is Lauren Kelly. Number three is Grace Follett. Number two is Brooklyn McCarthy. Number one is Hillary Neville, and their spear is Brooke Lannon. As I said, this is the crew from Placentia. This is only a two-boat race. So on stake number three, um, in the Miss Tubular, we have Cox and Kevin Chafe. 
stroke, Allie Cleary. Number five is Abby Chafe. Number four is Dakota Shepard. Number three is Abby Reynolds. Number two is Rhiannon Kelly. And number one is Cameron Taylor. So those folks are heading to the top of the pond there now, as you can see on your screen. Uh, interesting enough, they're not going to be next to each other. The team from Ascentia are on stake number one, and the team from St. John's are actually on stake number three. So there's a there's a bit of a bit of a there's a bit of strategy goes when you're picking your stakes, and the crew on stake number one. Um, they would have taken that because when they were on the turn, then they had the, would have had the team on stake two sort of pushing them over for their turn, but there is no one on stake two. And then the idea on stake number three is that um, it's the straightest course. So it's interesting enough, I don't know if these crews realized there was only two uh, teams in this race, but nevertheless, they're getting ready to set up there now. Boulder Books McDonald's Home Hardware. Fifth place in stake three with a time of 6.27.73, John Callahan Hanlon. So I'm back with Jason now. Amanda's is getting a bit of a break. Well, Amanda deserves a break. And I would just like to go on record and say that I think she's doing a fabulous job. Absolutely. So it's nice to see you again. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. I guess it was. I guess it was almost exactly one year ago. Yeah. yeah. Since we stood. Days off. Yeah. We we uh, we stood in a slightly different place. Yeah. And no. had similar conversations. Absolutely. I just said to Amanda, this is amazing. Actually, to set up the new uh, the winter circle it was absolutely amazing. So we've got some metal presentations going on behind us here. We do so. Uh, that is the race from, that's the 920 race. That's the winners from the 920 race. Okay, and while we're getting set up for our next video, I, I, or sorry, for our next race, I visited the Rogers Ignite Red House a little bit. I had a conversation uh, with some of the staff from, or sorry, cast from Hudson Rex and the dog himself. And let's let you guys have a look at that. It was fun. And it's five, the white four, three, two. Here we are at the Royal St. John's Regatta with the cast of Hudson and Rex. What's up, guys? How you doing? Up, I'm doing well. We've met each other a few times before. Hey, bud. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, first regatta? First regatta. Yeah. This is great. Okay, everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First regatta. Yeah. First regatta. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about it so far? Wild. It's a beautiful day. It's sunny. There's tons of people. Uh, what more could you ask for? Well, I mean, I could ask to be as handsome as you with like the George Clooney gray and on the yeah, sides and everything. It's, it's Kevin, it's my man. Curse. It's a curse. It's a curse. You know, yeah, yeah, I bet it's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what were, I, I'm sorry, did you want to talk? Do you, yeah? yeah? All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's there, he's into the racing? It's okay, like so I'm, I'm standing here and I'm watching, because literally what's happening, we're at the Rogers Ignite uh, Red House. Um, people can come by and they can win a barbecue that Home Depot graciously loaned us uh, or gave us. Uh, or you can meet the cast of Hudson Rex. And I'm watching people line up and I'm watching them be excited and people are clapping their hands and they're jumping up and down and there's a hugs all around. Nobody does that when they see me. So like, what's that, what's that feeling? Uh, well, it's it's pretty amazing. I mean, uh, it uh, doesn't really happen in regular life that often, so <laughs> so we enjoy it too. And it's like, oh, really? And so many people coming up and telling us that they enjoy the show and they watch it every night, and uh, so it's it's great. And I'm glad that uh, people of St. John's are uh, really enjoying the show. Yeah. So things are going for the show in general. Things are going well. Like. And this is like, because I mean, I know that in television, uh, when it comes to, I mean, not the community type of television that we do at Rogers, but the kind of stuff that you guys are working on, that it, getting the fan approval and getting that next season and getting the, and getting those extensions, that's uh, that's not the commonplace. A lot of it happens and then just kind of doesn't go where you necessarily want it to. But you guys are killing it. So can you speak to that? Like, what's that feel like? Oh, I mean, I think it's just like Johnny said, but I, I also think... It's this guy this helps? right here. I think it helps when you have a really cute dog, a really cute and talented dog. He agrees. Yeah. <laughs> who, who clearly listens pretty well. Um, so characters are developing. Are you guys getting, like, obviously when you're out around, people notice you. They recognize you. Do they expect you to be who you are in the show? And they're like, this guy's so much cooler. I, yeah, I don't, yeah, I think the first question I get is, like, where's your glasses? You can see right now? You're not, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's, that's sort of the big one, especially with Jesse. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and you're here in town now for how long working on, on, on the current season? Uh, geez, I think for the next six months or so we'll yeah. be here. So, uh, you know, look around. You'll see us around town for sure over there. For so, sure. Uh, yeah. uh, so did you hear that there's a change to the beer tent this year? I don't know if you guys know anything about this. Oh. Okay. I should, go, I should go find out. You should. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you a couple of things here now. Well, I mean, you could probably line up at this point. <laughs> Nine thirty. Okay. So here's what's happening at the beer tent this year at the 201st Royal St. John's Regatta. Almost every single brewery from the province collaborated on a special um, Regatta Day craft beer. And that's what they're serving over here. So there's history and there's legacy. And this this appears you know, to be the most interesting part of this conversation for you. But what, no, no, I, I guess that's, that's awesome. Like the, the regatta, because I never, I didn't know that the regatta was a thing out here. But it, it's such a big deal. Like the fact that the city closes down. Oh, entirely. And and all these people are out. Like I haven't seen. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a big deal. And well, there's special beer. And there's special beer, but I mean, wait till we get a little bit deeper. Like you won't cross the street. There'll be thousands and thousands of people here. I feel like I have taken enough of your time. It is such a pleasure to see you all. We have more people who want hugs and probably awkward cheek kisses. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Hudson and Rex. Any final words, sir? <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, we are lining up for the start of this race. And while this is happening, we're wrangling some crews, some rowers from the previous race, uh, to get some, some conversation from our winners. So at this part of the day, the sun's getting a little higher in the sky. It's getting a little hotter. It's getting a little warmer. And there's much more people around the lake than there was when we first opened up at around 7 o'clock this morning. And that is kind of good to see. It's nice to see. I mean, if I had to estimate, there's, so oh, there's well over a couple of thousand people here. But, of course, also, some point today, our wonderful Prime Minister, Mr. Justin Trudeau of the Liberal Party, is going to be around at some point. So keep your eye around the pond if you're down here today. See if you can see him and his handsome face and his lovely haircut. <laughs> I mean, he's a good politician and a good leader as well. Just saying. So everybody is lining up, getting steady. Only a couple of people in a couple of stakes, and they are off. This race has started, and we'll keep an eye on them. Diana, take it away. Hi, folks. I'm here with the winners of race number seven. It's the female master's race. And the winner of this race was Wedgewood, Wedgewood Physiotherapy. Um, so they were the fastest in time trials. And then they continued on with that and won the race. Um, their stroke was Susie Ennis. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, so I see lots of familiar faces here. Melissa Snow, Melissa Coxon. Um, all the girls here have seen them around the ponds for years. So what brought you back this year for master's? We came back uh, three years ago in preparation for the 200th, and we kind of stayed together. So we've enjoyed it. We've had a few little changes in our boat and uh, change up of our coxswain. But uh, yeah, it was, it was the 200th that drew us back, and then we decided to stay. Excellent. So this is the first time I've got to speak to anyone today. How are the pond conditions? They're fantastic. It's a beautiful pond out there today. Perfect. So you had a great turn, as I'm looking at Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> a few little snafus. We've done it a little better, but it's done. It's good. Awesome. Congratulations, girls, and I'm glad you, the first time into the new winner's circle. How is it? Amazing. That's why I had to stay around to do it. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right, good luck, girls. Hopefully we'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have the uh, race on the go here now, which is race number nine, the two-boat race, as I said. And um, so we have a team on stake one and a team on stake three. That's why, I guess, from the camera angle you folks are looking at, it looks like uh, they're pretty far apart. But they actually, it's just it's a two-boat race. Uh, they chose their stakes uh, strategically, as I said. The uh, 
the, the idea is that on stake three is the straightest course. And then, of course, you choose stake one because when you're coming out of the turn, then you have no one sort of forcing you over, uh, or, you know, or you would have someone forcing you over in your own water. Not the case here. But nevertheless, I just spoke to the ladies there from the Masters, and as they said, uh, the pond conditions are ideal. And from what I'm looking at here right now, from my camera angle, it does. The pond looks excellent, actually. So the team on stake one, which is um, Herald Hotel, uh, they're into the turn there, and it looks like they're pulling out. And the girls um, on stake three, they're just cutting there now, as you can see. That's an excellent vantage point there from the camera angle we're looking at, actually. So as you can see, the crew from Placentia there, a little bit under the bank. So again, especially in the championship races, when you get the really competitive crews, they're underneath the bank there, and it, they're almost sheltered from the wind. We have such a beautiful day here today, ideal pond conditions, so there's no wind. And they have a significant lead there now at a time at, we're at 325 right now, is our unofficial time on the clock. And they're just heading back to the pond there now. So uh, I rode for Ken King many, many lifetimes ago, I think, Probably almost uh, 35 years ago, I rode for Ken Kenny King from Placentia, so he's uh, good on him. He's still doing it today. Got these young girls with him. So he's certainly pushing them back the pond right now. Uh, their time for time trials was 6.09, so it would be excellent to uh, see what kind of opportunity we would have for them to beat that time now as they're uh, going through today. So the girls are really strong there now. You can see from this vantage point, Ken is really pushing them. They're at four minutes right now, and they're almost at the marquee there. So they're digging down deep. They'd really like to uh, beat their time uh, for time trials, obviously. That's always the goal here. So that's a great vantage point there. We've got to remember these girls are only intermediate female girls. So they're younger. They're younger than our senior females. And right now they're, uh, they're really pulling up the side there. So while we're watching in this race, I'm going to just throw it to Jason, who has Mark Critch and Melissa Royal, and he's going to have a chat with those folks. Okay, very exciting little side interview. I just grabbed this one out of the crown, our very own Melissa Royal and her husband. <laughs> okay, so you guys just got married, right? We did, yeah, three or four days ago. Yeah, and I mean, that was fun. It was incredible. The best weekend of my life, yep. Really? Amazing. I, I, that could have as much to do with cod fishing with Jeremy Charles is getting married? Well, yeah, well, there, there's that. Yeah, I did that go. That better not have been the highlight of your day. <laughs> no, I started <laughs> off my day cod fishing. Uh, uh, we, we caught enough, some fish to serve people later on that night, and we had a great time. Everybody, we love and hold dear out in Trinity for a couple of days, and it was the best weekend of my life, but the regatta is always the best Wednesday of my life. I think that, well, I mean, is it the best Wednesday of your life, or does it follow the best Tuesday evening of many people's lives? Or it's the best Wednesday, or maybe Thursday. Or Thursday. Of the summer, yeah. Of the yeah. Thursday. Yeah, the, be, the, best, Thursday. the best probably a Wednesday of my life, yeah. yeah. So, um, Melissa, Edit the Fog, obviously, but we, we've been working on this, collaborating for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, and I believe you hosted a couple of interviews here at the Regatta last year also. I did, yeah. yeah. I had um, a couple of politicians who were on the go and other members of our community and stuff, which is really fun. But you are doing such a great job today. I mean, this is a this is a great new setup, and it's, it's a long day. Well, it is a long day. I didn't do much with the setup, really. You weren't here pouring concrete? I wasn't laying the brick. I wasn't pouring the <laughs> I'm concrete. I'm very glad about that. I wasn't do well, I mean, you wouldn't be able to stand on it, obviously. Uh, I know you're both very busy. Mark, Melissa, thank you very much for taking a moment to say hello to us. I know, I mean, post-nuptials. I mean, <laughs> what better honeymoon than the Royal St. John's Regatta? Best honeymoon in the world, we, obviously. We walked down the aisle, now we're going up the pond. <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> you heard it here. Down the aisle, up the pond. We're going to go to a little break. Thank you very much, you. and we'll see you guys in just a bit. The lift wasn't working and he was in pain, so I tried to lift him on my own. Yes, it's bad. I'll need help. Oh. Can I help you with that? No, I'm good. Thanks. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are.
and gentlemen, we are getting ready to set up another race, I guess our 1030 race. And what are you expecting to see here, Diana? So it's a senior male race. Um, so these times are pretty close. I know that we haven't had the winners from one of the other races because they're reviewing the tape because I think there was a bit of a close finish. So uh, full slate for this race, which is good to see. Uh, like I said, it's the Exxon Mobile Mail General Workers Race. Um, and we're just going to have a look now. They're coming to the top of the pond. So in stake one in the broker, we have Coxon, Rich Bailey, Stroke, Morgan White. And of course, a couple of the Jackmans, White, Horan, Costello. And in the second state, Daryl Puck, Coxon, Stroke, Dean Hines. Over in the third stake, the Newfoundland Herald Boat, Cox and Melissa, Oregon, Stroke Jarvis Stead. In a stake next to them, number four in the Smith Stockley Boat, Cox and Jennifer Brown and Stroke Rick Kosh. And in the final stake, in the Oz Network, Cox and Jackie Warfield, who we'll have on with us in a little bit, and Stroke Keith Bussey. So they're all getting lined up, getting ready to go. And while we get ready for this rate to start, we have an interview coming up now shortly Coxon, with Sarah. some of the uh, juvenile females and their championship crew. We'll have a chess. Now's a good time while we get ready for this race to start to talk again a little bit about some of the sponsors here for the Royal St. John's Regatta, the Anglican East Diocese. Thank you so much. A lot of what's happening here right now could not have happened without you. Spirit of Newfoundland, again, like we saw in our interview for their catering. And, of course, Home Depot tossing us a barbecue that they're going to give away over at the Rogers Ignite Red House. And now let's go over to Diana and talk to these championship ladies. Diana. Here now. <laughs> Hi, and I'm back here with the winners from the juvenile female race. And I have with me now uh, Sarah Emberley. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Sarah, how long have you been on the pond? Uh, this is probably my sixth or seventh year rowing myself, but I've been coxing for the past three years. That's excellent. You don't look old enough to be on it that long. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I just said to these girls, they didn't have the fastest time in time trials, they, uh, but they did win the race. So tell me about that. How did all that happen? Um, a lot of early morning practices. These girls have been down here committed faithfully to every single morning at 7, 10 a.m. I know a lot of girls their age might want to like enjoy the summer, sleep in a little bit, but it really speaks volumes about their character and their commitment to the team, the commitment to the sport. So it's great to see everyone get along and get up and row together and accomplish this one goal. So that is awesome. And girls, uh, you were on stake three and you were right in the middle of the pack, so which is good. Like that's, you know, I know I'm old and I don't look like it, but I rode for 20 plus years. And that's where I always wanted to be in the middle of the pack. So was that stra strategy? You guys had like two crews on each side of you, which means that, you know, you had no other choice but to row a straight line and get back? It definitely helps push you to have uh, be in the middle of the pack and go down with a bunch of teams because you feel like you're neck and neck. So you feel like you have to give a little bit more just to push that little bit farther than the rest of the crews. So definitely could have helped the strategy today. Excellent. <laughs> All right, girls, congratulations and enjoy your day. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we got another. Thanks, girls. We have another race on the go here now. Um, race number 10. Myself and Jason are just going to have a look at this. It's just started. Um, senior male race number three um so jason already set up the race for you looks like some some uh I mean, it's pretty tight here as, yeah. they're, as they're approaching the boathouse totally i was just looking at their times uh on um from time trials but like you know when you're into the first quarter of the race now by the time they hit the ladies keg so you'll have your first quarter over with and then you'll see then people will start to break open a bit and i mean i i, I mean Myself and Amanda talked about it a little bit earlier. Time trials obviously are an indication of ability, but they're also an indication of like how well you rode on that day at that time. Yes. So there's not it's not necessarily the be all end all because people have great days, people have lesser days. So race day is really the only time that matters. Yes, totally. And I from my memory serves me correct. Uh, time trials this year Hi, wasn't a really gentlemen. great it wasn't a great day. It was a bit windy and so on and so forth. Is, uh, part of race so anyway, uh, they do have really good pond conditions here now as you're looking across at the, the field. You can Stake see the two looks to be nearly, well, a little less than a boat length ahead, but everybody yeah. else is pretty tight. Yeah, totally, yeah. So Stake two is uh, Daryl Pott, that's Red Madsen. Um, so yeah, you, now they didn't have the fastest time in time trials, but as you can see there right now, they certainly are pulling ahead. 
Um, it's and actually first, second, and third. It's a good race right now. Very tight. Yeah. So we're a minute 40 in. We're almost to the ladies' so cakes. So the Hearn distributing crew with Coxon, Denise Carew, Stroke, Terry Walsh. So it appears to be between fourth and fifth. It appears to be a wider separation, not necessarily in who's who's faster or slower in that cadence, but it appears as though like a wide separation between stakes, almost as though they're drifting a little. Yeah, I know it depends. And the uh, Jackie Warfield is the coxswain on stake five, and uh, people on stake five tend to take a little bit wider angle when they're going down the pond. So she might be, uh, you know, she's setting herself up now for how she's going to approach the turn. So she she totally might have herself pulled out to the side a bit, just preparing herself for that turn. There you go. So that's a good angle there. The pond is great. The pond conditions are great. The weather's really cooperating. So we're just going through the ladies' kegs there now for a couple of the crews at 235. So we're into our... Um, into the second quarter of the race now. So this is a tougher, this is a tougher quarter here. Uh, usually they say, you know, two and three, those quarters. So when you, you're heading to the turn and when you're coming to out of the turn. To the turn, coming out of the turn, getting yeah. your speed back up. Well, getting your speed back up. Plus it's sort of a dead part of the pond. You know, it's a wider part of the pond. It's a bit quieter. If you're gonna get some wind, that's where you're gonna get it, that type of thing. But the camera angle here is fabulous. Uh, oh, these drone shots that the oh, guys yeah. are bringing into us that we're able to share across here. Uh, it gives you such a good indication of um, how much distance is traveled, like the breadth of this race. Yes, like totally. The amount of distance that's traveled, for, like for the men, for instance, in and around 10 minutes, I mean, they're going, it's a couple of kilometers. Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah no, thank you for your patience. That is so a really like good angle. So it's a good race on the goal there between the second and third. In the North Atlantic Male Masters race, rowing in stake one with a time of 10, 11, 85, the Lands Rum Crew. <laughs> So they just they just announced the male masters winner because uh, they had to review the video there. There were some issues with so the uh, I think with the time. Roach, stroke Bill James, so crew members uh, Terry Tim O'Neill. So Darryl I mean, Ryan, having these guys Ray announce Cadigan, that's sort of a Hall, sort of a, an exciting Harry situation Harry to be able to sit back and have the watch and yep, and wait sure. and see what the truth of it is. Yep, is for sure. Of and you can hear the crowd. The crowd is all over this. They're incredibly excited by it. So as these guys, we're going to have a quick chat with the winners of the last race, the Masters race, um, as these guys are heading down to the turn. So we're uh, setting ourselves up here, time of uh, 4.40. Almost into the turn for this race, and I'm just going to have a quick conversation with the uh, winners. I'm just. And you can hear the crowd. Crazy here. So let's talk a little bit about about um, uh, the Hall of Fame inductee that what everybody's cheering for, not just winning this race, but. Yeah. So great. So we're going to have a chat now with the uh, Lambs Rung crew. And uh, Graeme Roach is uh, Cox and that crew, and Graeme did get inducted into the Hall of Fame last week. Uh, Graeme uh, was a, you know, tried his hand at role many, many years ago, but since that time, he's been a fabulous, uh, he's been a fabulous Coxon. Um, such a volunteer to the, to the sport. Like, he's just, has had so many teams. So there's a lot of experience on that team, and we're gonna have a chat with them now in a couple of minutes. As these folks, uh, time of 5.35, so beautiful shot there we can see. Incredible shot. Yeah. And it, one of my favorite things about being here and seeing the people in the winner's circle, watching them celebrate, is they all bring their families in and everything is all is a big family sort of occasion. And that's something that's, all that's really great to see. Yes, I know. It's great to see. Um, so I'm just going to get the Masters team over here now to have a quick chat while some of these folks are into the turn and out. Some of the, these folks are into the turn and out. Team, into the into the turn and out and uh while there are crew here our teams here are setting up to take the turn i'm just gonna have a quick chat here now with lamb's rum we'll get everybody wrangled here yeah. for you diana yeah. we'll have a chat men, with these men i'm trying to deal with some men here so we're on official time is 6:25 going on so we're just gonna watch all the crews are pretty well in and out of the turn right now 
All right, so I am here, as I said, with the winners of the uh, the Masters team, uh, Graham Roach. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Graham, we just had a chat about it now. You got inducted into the Hall of Fame last yes. week. Yes. Um, you got a bit of experience on the crew here. Yeah, for sure. We got a lot of years in the boat, for sure, except for Daryl Ron. He's our rookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's getting the rookie, cox uh, rookie of the year here. <laughs> and uh, Daryl's no stranger, of course, to it. No, Daryl's got championships. Sure. We got lots of championships yeah. on this crew, lots of yeah. familiar faces. Yeah. Uh, so, how did you make up with these guys this year? Tell me about them. Excellent boys. Really, they're really great team to roll with. They're all committed 100%. And, and like I say, lots of the medals and lots of championships and experience in the boat. So it went really well. I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, so do we have a time for the championship rings? And we're not in it, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a really thank, close... Uh, thank God, they say, because we don't have a second I don't, race I don't in know. us. We got the legs for it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Well, we had a really great race that time, really, really close race, so it went well. Excellent. Yeah. I think I have a feeling you're going to have trouble finding some of them if there was a championship race. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, yeah. boys. Enjoy the day. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Okay, so we're going to go back to our race that's on the go there now. Myself and Jason are going to finish off this race. So we're at race number 11 here. So we can see uh, we can see from the drone footage, it's certainly a wide berth there. Of, oh, uh, my goodness, yes. Yeah. yeah. But it's good. It's all so you're good. You're seeing some separation coming back now across yep. back up to the head of the pond. Yep. Totally. But I mean, up in up in stakes one and two. I mean, they're that's tight. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, yes, it is. And we just, as I said earlier, uh, the team on stake one, um, they have the fastest time. I'm just trying to find my race here now. They had the fastest time, but now it looks like they're pulling a bit ahead there. There, that's a better angle as they're heading to the ladies' kegs. And it's always so hard. Like there's a bit of a there's a bit of a parallax when you're on an angle. It's hard. To, it's hard to tell sometimes either from the camera view or from us as we watch them. They they're, they're starting to approach, coming in a little bit closer to the boathouse. It can be hard sometimes to judge who exactly is in the lead or or and and that's something that can be difficult for the audience when you're watching on television. You're watching at home. You're rooting for one person. You might think that they're on either side of things and they might not necessarily be so you really need to be watching the difference between your official time and the official times that get called out after right absolutely that's exactly right uh, so this is a this is a nice race here now they're past they're mass, past the kegs uh, so you can see they're really digging down here to see what they can pull out uh, two experienced coxswains here rich bailey and daryl pot uh, like i said there was a 10 minute 10 second difference in them in the time trials um, so they seem like two teams seem like they're really making up for that here right now. Uh, you're going to see them coming by the marquee there now shortly. I mean, see that drone flying through the air there, just over the lake, watching them come down. Man, what like? Pretty impressive. It is. It really, really is. I don't know the where talent, that was 20 years ago. The talent, the skill set that goes into it. It's <laughs> yeah. uh, it's great to see. So nine. We're almost coming up to the 10 minute mark here now. So they're just about at the marquee. So this is a great race going on here now, as you can see, as they're getting incredibly they're almost tight. across from us. So it looks like the crew on stake one have pulled out a little bit. Maybe half a boat's length. Yeah, half a boat length, like probably about four or five seats. Which I mean, I mean, for for senior men, how many strokes is that? Uh, four or five seats is probably about six or seven strokes. Yeah. Yeah. So, if so can make certainly little... still be made up. They got to oh, go totally, now. Though. Yeah, they got to go now. They got lots of time. So they got a little over a minute left to roll in there now at 10:24. So they're going to improve their times from time trials as we expected. Because um, weather not necessarily the greatest. No, that's right. Yeah. Oh, number six. Number six just lost his oar in uh, on stake two. So that's going to hurt them, unfortunately. Now again, for for anybody who's watching, any spectators. When you say you lost an oar, didn't fall out of the boat. You no. just didn't have your rhythm. You caught the water on your caught way out. So you almost like you say you caught a crab. Yeah. So the boat, so he did a pretty good job. But just so having the camera was right on him, poor guy. But he did a pretty good job of getting it back. But the oar actually went down by the side of the boat. You can see. A little bit there, yeah. Yeah, it killed the momentum of the boat, unfortunately. Yeah. So Blue took that and one. Then, yeah, yeah. And, in, and instead of that half boat length that we would have expected, Towards the end, they picked up the other half on account of losing the oar. Yeah, it certainly widened. Uh, it's it certainly widened the gap between the two crews. So our other three crews are going to come in there now. So they've all improved their times, it appears. We're 
calling the Hampton So Diana, Jackson while we're waiting for, for some of these things to come in to get official times, to get the next uh, medal presentations and set up for uh, our uh, our next race, um, you've been around the pond for a little while. Hey, yeah, just for a few years. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, we're always we're always pleased. It's always a pleasure to have you around to help commentate, to help narrate some of what's going on. The knowledge base that you're providing is greatly appreciated. That's good. And I, I got to say, even though I'm not down here every day, um, I am down East End every day just because of where I work, but I'm not down here every day. But I, I will say that I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I love all the familiar faces, and it's great. Like, every year, it never gets old. All the same people keep coming back. And I, what I really enjoy now is... Um, you see that a lot of uh, rowers from my day, um, their uh, kids are rowing. Um, oh, which is great. You see a legacy oh, yeah. and it, it keeps it it keeps it going. So like if you had to talk about rowing uh, as far as, you know, f from this sort of caliber of rowing, um, as a sport, the evolution of a sport, what are we seeing? Is there a youthification in yeah. rowing? You oh, see totally. more people on the pond? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I just spoke to uh, that Masters race. Darren High was in that race. So they had a great story on TV last night about six generations of uh, rowing from um, his family. And his son, Darren Side Seth is rowing. And I have to say, Darren, whatever you're doing with that child, you're doing it right. Because he should be here commenting today. He was so well spoken. He knows his way around. He knows, yeah, like he has actually been groomed. So he did yeah. fabulous. It was great. Yeah. So we have more winners behind us now. We're going to have a chat within a second. There's a buzz about there us is here. There totally. Like but <laughs> there, there really is. There's, there's a lot going on. Uh, there's some, I'm, I'm going to step away. We have a conversation to be had here. Yeah, it's really hard to stay focused. You're right. So right now we have Jason. I'm going to throw to Jason, and he's going to have a conversation here with uh, Seamus O'Regan. We're up. We're up. Okay. Well, you're getting rolled up. Are we going to fight? Come on. Come on. No, no. I feel that sun coming down now, right? So you got to roll up the sleeves, get a little tan on the forearms. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure I need to do a whole lot of an introduction here. I think we all know the man that I'm standing next to. Um, 201 years of this. Yeah. Right? Right. A lot of legacy. Right. A lot of history. Yeah. Um, royal. Like we're talking about stuff so yeah. um, Tyra Lannan, growing up being around Newfoundland was the Lauren regatta Kelly, thing for you personally Grace every year yeah you know and it's funny because then you, you grow up thinking that a weather dependent statutory holiday is totally normal right yeah, right exactly. and, uh, and, and it is until I've never you go heard away before, yeah. and it's until you go away and you're like yeah do we have this holiday and everybody gets off and you know but if it doesn't happen if there's nice weather for the racing and they're like what and then, you know, I know friends of mine who have to deal with, like, lawyers or other yeah, firms yeah. or architects or whatever, and they're yeah. dealing with firms on the mainland and around the world, and they're like, yeah, the meeting will be Wednesday. Well, of course, unless, you know. Unless the regatta doesn't unless go ahead. Unless the then winds be, are too yeah. high, <laughs> in which case we'll have the meeting on Thursday. It yeah. makes no sense. And, and I know exactly what you it mean. It makes like all sense my, to me. Like, my day job is in real estate, so the same sort yeah. of thing happens. Like, all of the lawyers' offices are closed. The banks yeah. are closed. Is, I mean, I'm, well, of course. because I'm it's sure, regatta. Yeah, obviously. Everything shuts down. Right. I was over talking to the cast of Hudson and Rex a little bit earlier yeah. about that, and they were like, "What? Well, like, like the city shuts down? Yeah. For the, it's it's a big thing. And of course, now a lot of the rest of the country, they would have taken Monday. Yeah. Right. Well, what's the fun in that? See, well, it's the it's the anxiety level that builds up. I find the few times that has happened in my life where Are you Wednesday about regatta roulette. No, no, it's the win. <laughs> I was a fine player in my day. Let me tell you. But no, right now I was just going to say like Wednesday night. Thursday night, but then Friday. Like if it doesn't go ahead Friday, then a holiday's wasted. That's very because it's true, a Saturday or the Sunday. You can't pull that on a weekend, right? But I think what's awesome. It, it's it's a good thing to say about us um, th as a people. All we really care about on whether or not this goes ahead mm -hmm. is is it windy. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll go through the rain. We'll go through the slush. We'll go through all of it. It's just the wind. And I wouldn't put it past us here to have to go through slush. You know, I remember as a kid being in some pretty motley fruit. weather down here, like really bad, really bad. Yeah, because the winds are up, then they can stay up sometimes. So, anyway, so we are you into it? We all think this is totally normal, which is what I love. And I love the fact that you have more and more tourists and visitors from away who come to it nowadays. Yeah. And they're just enthralled with it. It's fantastic. Well, We're speaking speaking of visitors it. from away, wow. I understand we have an important visitor floating around here at some point today. Who? No, oh, you never heard, did you? 
Who? Universe, there's um, Mr. Justin Trudeau was floating around he here later today. Mean, I don't know. He does. He tells me nothing. I don't know. No. I don't know. See, yes, he's here, and we're see. delighted he's here. And uh, I don't know. He's somewhere back there, I think. Yeah, we're delighted. Yeah. Really, it's great. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We've been after him to come down, and um, really glad that he he could because this look, this is a great event. It's just so much a part of who we are. And frankly, I think he's not just about everything else. So you know, um, you know, he's it's he's nice, huh? he's hiked mountains. He's <laughs> yeah. swam in the ocean. Uh, he knows all the words of the Rhines and the Pittmans. Um, this, I think, is the coup de grace. Like, uh, he needs to come to Regatta and have a great time, and he's ready to, to do it. He played a little roulette last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. we went down to Chase Landing, had a feed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. think I heard something about that on the radio. Um, I also, I think it would be it would be great if we could get him up in the beer tent, because do you know what they're serving up there now? What are there's, they serving up there There's um, all of the breweries, almost all the breweries in the province, collaborated on a custom regatta brew exclusively. Oh, yeah, right about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. spearheaded by Kitty Vitti, so that would be great. Yeah. Anyway, Seamus, thank you very much, sir. Always a pleasure. Great pleasure. And Happy Diana, regatta, everybody. <laughs> Diana, let's hear what you have to say with some winners. Okay. All right, hi, so I'm here with the winners from the Intermediate Female Race. And uh, as we talked about it earlier, um, I got to put a plug in because I am from Placentia. And these girls are from Placentia. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, as I said, Kenny King is here now. He's the coxswain. And, I, and I'm going to tell her age because Kenny, uh, Kenny actually coxed me about 35 years ago. So, so congratulations, Kenny. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, glad to still see you around. So I'm going to have a chat with here with Grace Follett now. She's the spokesperson for these ladies. And Grace, how long have you guys been together? Eight years. Eight years. So you don't look old enough to be here eight <laughs> years. So tell me a little bit about the crew. How would you come together? Uh, we were all in grade five or six, I'd say, when we started, and it was kind of just a spur of the moment thing. It was never really planned. We just started, and we all loved it, and we stuck with it. So you guys participated in all the regattas, I assume? Yes. Yeah. All right. Congratulations. Good for you. So, girls, are uh, you going to be back next year? Yes. So do you play other sports? Yeah, we're all involved in pretty much everything. All right. That's excellent. Congratulations, girls. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. And I'm going to go back to Amanda there now. All right, girls, thanks. Thank let me have a, let me just ask. Very excited bunch of girls, the Herald Hotel. They should be excited, very exciting. Race number 11, as we continue on, the 10.40 a.m. race. Stake number one in the Cougar helicopter is Medivac Blue Cross, um, Cox and Trevor Ring, Stroke Janine Snow, Jeannie Snow. Um, and they're rowing on stake one in the Cougar helicopter boat. For race number 11, the VOCM female commercial race. VOCM, a great sponsor of the Royal St. John's Regatta. Also uh, rowing in the boat, or in this race, on stake number two in the Palmer Lou uh, is Domino's Pizza. And Cox and Frank Pittman, stroke Katie Batson, number five, Jane Williams, number four, Melanie White, Laura Sharp, Bernetta Pennell, and Charmaine Freak. Some familiar names in that boat there, some friends of mine. On stake number three, Yetman's Shingles, uh, Coxon Cody Tops, Stroke Emily Parsons, Kathleen Shea, Stephanie Tuck, Emma Ramsey, Billy Yetman, and Alyssa Moores, and they'll be rowing in the Iceberg Gold. And on stake number four in the Jerry Angel is the Discovery Center, Cox by Kevin Chase, Chafe, Stroke Stacy Slade, number five, Stephanie Slade, Megan Lear, Samantha Slade, Destiny Butt, and Caitlin King. Caitlin King. Uh, then number stake number five in the Dictator, we have Universal Corporate Wear, Lynn Hindy's awesome company. Um, she's got a couple crews down here today. Coxon is Ed Boone, stroke Amanda Caravan. And in that boat is Valerie Ducey, Monica Martin, Jessica Connolly, Clara Pollard, Michelle Bennett, um, and spares Kara Courtney and Trina Appleby. So we see them lining up here at the beginning of the race. The gun is about to go. So from my vantage point, you can hear the sound of the gun, but you can also see the smoke coming up out of the gun. So as these girls are out here rowing and lining up for the start, unbeknownst to them, uh, there's quite a crowd brewing here at the boathouse with rumors of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's presence or arrival i don't know really what's going on but there's lots of security personnel around and something is not normal no, and i don't think it's 
for us. I yeah. think it's a choice for you and I. <laughs> I was starting to feel a little famous. <laughs> yeah. I think we should try and put them in a boat. Personally. Oh, so I think I just heard the gun go a second first. time for a false start. So, um, yeah, do you want to explain the false start protocol? Yeah, so basically now the crew has been the worst thing, worst thing in the world. Uh, maybe good for some people, but worst thing for those that are in a groove and they had a good start and they're ready to go. Uh, but, you know, the false start could be for many reasons. The regatta committee could have called it back. Someone could have had a equipment, an issue with their equipment. Um, yeah, so there's a multiple reasons why, but nevertheless, they do go back to the starting line, and they do have to uh, line up again and restart the races. Now, we're pretty good on time. Yeah, uh, we're not behind schedule, but just to share a little false start um, story of my own, last year during the championship race, I think it was, we had a false start. Yes. Definitely one, one of the races last year was a false start. I don't think it was the morning. Pretty sure it was the evening. So um, what happened was some I think someone just jumped the gun. They hadn't called it, and they started. And in that case, that crew just got a warning. They called us all back to the start, and we did it again. So from a rower's perspective, I mean, you're warming up, and you want to be warm for the start of your race. So sometimes a false start can throw off your desired amount of time from completing your, completing your warm-up to starting um, your actual race. So that's kind of challenging, but um, as a rower, you have to be ready for it. Yeah, it's total. So it is difficult, I will say that. Uh, and you will find now the coxswain is going to be there now. He's totally going to be regrouping the, the rowers. Um, you, you gotta, you gotta t sort of like settle everybody down. Uh, like I said, some crews, some some athletes or some rowers will go back and you know regroup, ready to go, no issue. Some fellows, some people find it hard on the head. They find it a little bit more difficult uh, to go back and get into that that groove. But like Amanda said, um, unless there's an equipment issue or something like so that, if someone jump on the jump the gun, the result, well then the that's an issue. Um, the then they'll, they'll uh, give them their warning, so on and so forth. You're talking about your story from years ago. I remember my husband rode with the police with many, many, many moons ago, and it was a contentious race. Anyway, um, it was really few of those over the years. Those, yes. It was actually really 15, funny because uh, I believe VOCM was calling the race from the head of the pond. We didn't have everything we have going on now, so they were sort of stuck in a little booth over there calling the start of the race. And I do know, I can't remember the name of the gentleman from VOCM that was calling the race, but I do know he made the comment, there go the police and there goes the gun. So it never got called back, but anyway, it's just one of those things, the rivalry of the, the police crews of days gone past of, uh, you know, some of the antics that took place, right? Le leave it to the police to break the rules. <laughs> totally, yeah. But anyway, there's a lot more checks and balances in place now where those types of things are really uh, watched and they don't, there's an opportunity for it not to happen. Yeah, I know it might have been Brian Medora calling those yes, races. It was yeah, Brian Medore, exactly. he has called a good many races over the years for VOCM. Exactly. So we got some more winners coming to our winner's circle. With Coxon Daryl Putt, Stroke Dean Hines, crew members Paul Harris. So that is the second place team in race number 10, the general workers. That's the silver medalist winners. Congratulations, gentlemen. So they're just getting their medals there now. On behalf of Exxon Mobil are Peter Larden and Cindy Roach. And we have coming up here um, rowing, what, are we doing race 11 now? Yes, or 12? we are. 11. Yeah, we're on race 11. Yep. And then in the next race, I've got to, uh, a special greeting to send out. So I will definitely do that. So you can see all the crews there. The regatta committee do give them a little bit of time to get back up to the head of the pond and get straightened away there. Um, <clears throat> again, we have no uh, information here as to why that false start was called, uh, but it appears all uh, it doesn't appear to be a big equipment malfunction because all teams are heading to the back the top of the pond there now and they're lining up. All, all coxswains have different strategy with this and all rowers. Some teams like just to get in there and get lined up and get ready to go. Others want to be the last team in, so it's a real little interesting uh, sort of cat and mouse game of how that goes. <laughs> Beautiful shot there of uh, Kitty Vitty. The crowds are starting to come down. The weather is actually perfect here today. It's not too hot. Like I said, the pond conditions have maintained the same. It's been this way pretty well the last couple of days. So it's really nice to see. So our last crew is almost lined up there now. And like I said, we're pretty well on time. We're doing well that way. So we are, um, we're not running any time crunches. We have a lunch break. We have a supper break today. So this is pretty relaxing here today. We have lots of time to get the races in and lots of time to 
lots of time to uh, for everybody to have plenty of time at the head of the pond there because nobody wants to be rushed. So nobody wants to be rushed when right, they're uh, getting ready, ready for the race. The gold medal and trophy for the so as this crowd or, or this race is on and up, a man is actually going to grab the winners the um, from that last race, uh, race number 10, as they're getting the their medals. The crew could come forward, so please, for presentation of the gold medal, medal and trophy. trophy. We've lost Jason. I think Jason has been uh, brought over. He's going to have a, have a quick word with the Prime Minister over there. Excellent. So Domino's Pizza with Toxin, Rich Bailey, so the are Stroke, fantastic Morgan here White, right now. crew members Graham Jackman, Doug Jackman, come over? Sean White, Matt Foran, Sorry. Chad Costello, Mike Yetman, and Gary Collins. So that's our crew now just, that's our group now just getting their medals. And then uh, the man is going to have a chat with them. And as this race is getting underway in the first minute, we'd like to thank um, sponsors of the regatta, the Anglican East Diocese, and also for providing the catering for the Rogers uh, Volunteers of Spirit of Newfoundland. And when you get a chance, pop by the Rogers Ignite tent and enter to win a barbecue so generously donated by Home Depot. Congratulations to Domino's Pizza. So, Once they get a few photos, Domino's Pizza winners of race number 11, the VOCM, oh no, not, no, not race number 11. Race number 10, Do Domino's Pizza is everywhere. So race number 10 winners are gonna come talk to us uh, after they get their photos. Of course, very important, these trophies, you don't take them home after your race. They are stored in the regatta boathouse locked up in the museum, I believe. Um, from year to year, so this is the only day of the year where the rowers get to touch the trophies. So these boys are about to hoist it, hoist it over their heads here now. So in this crew, we have on uh, rowing number five, number four, brothers Graham and Doug Jackman. So they are uh, huge athletes, huge hockey background, and uh, their father, actually, uh, Robert Bob Jackman, many, many, many years ago, he was involved with the regatta and heavily involved with hockey. Uh, so that is nice to see his sons down here. We're just going to get him over now to have a chat with Amanda. Yep, and there are some in this race now that you see on the screen. Uh, some of the girls are soccer players, I believe. I know um, Katie Batson has played lots of soccer, and uh, for sure. Okay, here we are, the Domino's men's crew. So uh, get themselves in a line and come on into the shot. Hey guys. All right, so. First, I'm going to, all right, as we get organized here, I'm going to ask these winners of the race number 11, um, or no, sorry, race number 10, Domino's Pizza, to introduce themselves. So, here I am. Here we go. Uh, Gary Collins. Uh, Matt Horan. Doug Jackman. Chad Costello. Graham Jackman. Sean White. Morgan White. Rich Bailey. All right, I'm going to pause here and chat with Rich because he's the only familiar face, but uh, how was it out there, Rich? Uh, it was a great road. It worked to perfection. We knew we were going to be hung going down because we knew another team, but uh, as soon as he came on the ball, we had a really good turn, and then we just rode through him, come back. So it was well executed. So was this um, time-wise, how does this compare to your times earlier in the season? No, it's the fast time the road this year. You know, it's, it's not, we were 11.20 the other night, so 11.7 this morning, was it? I think it was. It's not bad. You know, only second year team, so we are doing okay. These are only second-year rowers. Oh, let me talk to one of them. So I know Gary Collins, 
You're, you rode with NTV in the time trials, so you're a spear. Yes, uh, spear and coach and helping out with the guys. Guys had a phenomenal row today. Came from behind, it looked really good. Nice row and a great job on everybody. Okay, and you seem smiley, so I want to say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Hi, what is your name and what position do you sit in in the boat? Matt Horan, I, I row number two. He goes deep. He goes deep. He goes deep. He goes deep. He's